Everybody, as you can see, we're off to an amazing start tonight with no kinks. As always, hello, hello, <laughs> on Wednesday, Wisdom. Yeah, and we're there. Hi. Yeah, hopefully we're live. Yeah. No kinks. As oh. always, hello, hello, it's, <laughs> on I, You know, we have to really rethink the way we are starting yeah. our live streams, because mm -hmm. lately it hasn't been working in our favor. <laughs> but... Uh, we're trying our best. <laughs> A for effort, I hope to God. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, thank you for coming over, everybody who is watching already, yeah. and being so active in the chat room right now. Uh, a quick shout out before we move uh, forward with XX Jamel uh, Ahmed Saleh. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name probably. Uh, really bad. Terra Lammers on TV. Hi, and thank you for coming back again. Uh, one of our mods. Yes. Uh, thank you. Ottero Studios oh. in a chat room. Uh, welcome <laughs> our guest. It's his birthday. That's right. Happy birthday. We'll have to sing that yep. one when you come on. So be ready or turn off the sound. Uh, and the uh, best friend in your thread, of course, is doing her work hours, mm -hmm. as well as being in our chat. Yes. That's a dedication. <laughs> Love uh, it. Don't get caught. <laughs> um, thank you. We yeah. really appreciate that. I appreciate that. I know you can't hear us, but you are in the chat. So uh, I know you're going to come back and watch it, right, afterwards? Uh, <laughs> Badger Farm Go. Welcome. Hello. Another nice hi, and this natural journey. Thank you so much for tweeting mm -hmm. at us today yes. that you're going to be on the live stream. That's so amazing. I love knowing, yeah, I love knowing who's going to be on, yeah. and thank you for making it. That's so great. And Joey is in, uh, hello, my second family. Uh, what's the uh, opening music? <laughs> Entertain 45. Hey guys, thank mm. you so much for coming in. Entertainment 45, we just connected today, so so glad to have you here. Oh, you, oh. Yeah, welcome. I hope you really well. enjoy it. Please don't judge us by the intro. We can actually do things good sometimes. Yeah, but as we have said before, we're transparent, honest, yep. just the way we are. We're not going to pretend we're a broadcasting agency. No. <laughs> Uh, there are just the two of us in our living room slash sometimes bedroom. <laughs> um, oh, geez. Did I make him And red? what time is it? Did I it, make him red? It's 8.06. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in for the grill. Welcome. Hello from BC. <laughs> Laughed my butt off the other night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that was a memorable evening. <laughs> we had fun. That's uh best friend of your thread always seems to bring that effect in. So... <laughs> <laughs> we get the laughs going. This is fun. Yeah, that's what we're here for. This is uh, there. Oh, Reese is here. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, and I'm it's, glad it's I got my comment in uh, before Trainman got in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Trainman? Oh, thank you for coming. Yeah. We so appreciate yeah. your dedication for coming back and being our mod. Uh, thank you yeah. so much. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was epic. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, not much, uh, you know, pre-written no. stuff, uh, even not at all, I would say. so. There's certain things, through. like, in all seriousness, that we do want to try and, like, now solidify the format a bit. But, I mean, we always want to keep it like this. This is... He just can't keep my mouth shut, so that's why we're <laughs> going to keep it like this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's too early for yeah. Adult Swim. Yeah, we're going to get Stay the on, get we're... the mute button. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. 
Okay, okay, you can come back. <laughs> so, there you go. Another, so welcome oh, again. Oh, geez, this thing works, guys. <laughs> this thing works. I've created the Holy Grail. You've seen it here live. <laughs> oh, um, oh, Philip, you're here. Thank you. Oh, excellent. I, you've, I appreciate it. Any way you can be part of it, it's, it's marvelous. So. Uh, yeah, you'll have lots to hear tonight. Um, he's an artist, but I mean, he's got some great stories and stuff like that. Fantastic guy we got tonight. We're so lucky to get him. Yes. Uh, I caught his live stream the other night after we did ours. I think it was maybe Saturday night or because it was the weekend. Yeah. Like Friday or Saturday. Yeah. I, um, yeah. Andrew does this thing when uh, uh, he browses around uh, the live streams and just yeah. to chat with people and just, uh, you know enjoy each other's company so to say and uh and discover this amazing artist i don't know how i didn't find him earlier i'm yeah, I, I, I thank lucky stars i did i i watched for a good two and a half hours you kept telling me like i should go to bed like you were interested in it too like this yeah i was interesting in, in, yeah. in, in drawing because i i love drawing uh painting if i would have more time I got yeah it. but anyway i uh, love that so i just enjoyed uh his drawing it's and it, so just tough. his format is different as well i love so it i, love, I love it i mean he does that stuff from the 80s that i liked and he does uh video game type of art you know very epic uh his uh, uh myth mythological base it's, it's oh uh, uh rob hoffman so glad to have you here uh yeah, Panala, Gonzalez, yes. Halos and Edens. Hi, Excellent. just oh, seen you in so the other stream. In for the grill is here for our adults when portion well, Yeah, I seen be, that. Yeah. That's gonna be maybe later. <laughs> Ball caps, uh yeah, for free beer. Well, thank you. Send yeah. it over here. <laughs> Come on, where is it? We're waiting. Uh uh, okay, Rudy Mongru uh, Jr. Yes, Hello, we, all too. I was just over today. Yeah, it's been a couple of days since we last connected. So uh, it's great to have you here. It's, it's nice to see. Uh, we, we, it's funny. You see some people a lot, and then it just takes missing one video in the updates. And the, we all know the more we add, then it starts to get a bit uh, harder to do. But uh, it's great. That's why I try to look in the in the threads and see if there's somebody that can say, "Oh yeah, I haven't seen them in a while." Because a lot of times, as we know, YouTube is famous for unringing the bell on us. So I really try to keep my eyes out. Oh, Rob Hoffman, yeah. you're so sweet. You're actually one of my favorite streams. I've just yeah. been very busy lately. Thank you so much. This is so sweet. We love hearing uh, that so much. He's a great supporter. Yeah. He. Um, Plays piano amazingly, and you, you've done uh, opening themes for the Fish Sandwich Show for uh, yeah, Miss Kathy. Kathy. Yeah, and I love piano music. Yeah, I, I no. mean, in my free time, I, I listen a lot to piano music, especially when I edit photography. I, I find it's very inspirational. So yeah, thank you so much. It's no. so nice to hear you guys saying that. Yeah. It's really um, hard to keep up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, a tweet is a stream. Yes, thank you so much. And yes. if you haven't yet, go out and and just share it. Yes, it really does. That's the greatest yeah. help there could ever be is that tweet. Yeah. It really does make a difference. You can see it in the, the way people come into the stream. Yeah, so. just uh, press that share button or yep. go over to our Twitter at Push the Studios and retweet our post uh, about our tonight's guests. That's right. Anything goes. Uh, we just appreciate it so much because the more, the merrier. It's yep. just going to be much, so much, much, much more fun for you guys too. Check uh, thank you so much. I'm uh, gonna turn you for a second. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, hello, and Heathens. Uh, Ashara Studios uh, is our guest for tonight <laughs> and is going to be on very very soon and for those who didn't hear it's his birthday he's our birthday mm -hmm. boy today that's very cool for him to come on his birthday yeah we actually i was very shocked because when we talked initially about uh him coming on our live stream and and setting up the date he never said anything about the birthday and then when I, when uh we finally like booked in the time and the day he's like oh and by the way it's my birthday <laughs> what are you sure you really want to come on on our <laughs> live stream when it's your birthday? Yeah, no, that was that's, yeah. Why not? I, 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 I was so. I mean, he's got a wife and a child, not so like to put out this time to be with us. I mean, as it, it, it speaks to how amazing the people are that are on the show and in the chats. You guys, we really truly appreciate you all. Oh yes, yeah, it's 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 so 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 amazing. So, uh, yeah, and Andrew is brave enough to leave me alone with the live stream. <laughs> Good luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's just going to check on our kitties, uh, whose uh, bedtime is right about now. I'm very well, loudly spoken today, so uh, apologize in advance. Um, yes, by the way, train man, and no, I didn't ignore or didn't see your message. Train man uh, has a new video out, so uh, if you are interested in trains, and maybe even if you're not, because you might get interested in trains, go over to Train Man's channel and check out his new video uh, after this stream or at the same time, if your internet connection works for that. Uh, sending the love, Pamela Gonzalez. Thank you so much. In for the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's so amazing. You guys are connecting with each other. Uh, that's what the chat is here for. And that's what I enjoy about the chats when I go to other people's live streams. Obviously, I love listening to other people talking, um, sometimes more than my own voice when I'm talking. As you say, it just depends on the day, ha ha. Uh, but uh, I, I love interaction. It's just so fun. Especially, you know, it, it, it creates such a nice interactivity and um, I love it. I re I really enjoy it. I love the positivity and mm -hmm. all the good vibes and, you know, and sending love to each other and checking good each night, other out. Mom. Oh, you're coming to say good night. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to come say good night to people? Good night. Because I'm talking to people. Uh, that's our daughter, Audrey. For those of you who didn't check out our stream yesterday, we had a balloon man on. Mommy, smell. Yeah. Did you brush your teeth? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do I smell people? I don't think they want to smell. <laughs> okay, good night, honey. Good. Check yeah. off me. I will check on you. Uh, yeah, so yesterday we had a balloon man, Terrace Balloon Man, on uh, with his family, who has two adorable daughters and his wife. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, go back to our yesterday's stream after this one and check it out. He made some adorable balloon animals and it, it's not your regular balloon animal as you are used to see. This is exquisite detailed work. Uh, it, it was amazing. Our daughter was overexcited. I think was too. I don't know who was more excited, my daughter or me. So, uh, but yeah, to, uh, go and check that out. We got to come up with a new system here. I feel like I'm getting into the general Lee every time I see it. And uh, <laughs> uh, Joey said, oh, so sweet. She's so natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's. Uh, she might take over uh, yeah. for our streams, I think, soon too. Uh, what is the name of your introduction? I gotta song? look it up. Uh, it's 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 a free song. Uh, it's kind of neat, actually. Uh, it works for everything. So it's got an edge to it, but then it's got the the vocal, so it's great. That's why I liked it for introductions and stuff. Uh, Pet Shop Media, hello everyone. Wanted to stop by quickly to offer my love and support. Thank you oh, so much. That is so nice. Thank you. The tapes, Train Man. Do you know what tapes are? We're gonna <laughs> keep. Uh, Bringing the legend on. Do you know what tapes are? <laughs> uh, <laughs> to answer uh, Reese, it's uh, Saclo 22 turning into normal. And then in brackets, what once felt strange. So if that helps you any, <laughs> all the power to you. It's just, I, I, I think I actually found that one of all places was the YouTube audio library. I, yeah, I'm you can sure. download the yep. uh, songs from the library. The same as Facebook uh, yep. uh, audio library. You can download it and use it for any videos, not just for YouTube videos, uh, for any purposes. That's what's there for. Pet Rock is not here for too long, he said, right? Yeah. So, Pet Rock, I just uh, opened your uh, channel because I want to go over after because there's one I was talking about a while ago that most likely the bell is not pushed because I haven't been on in a couple of days. So, I'll definitely go on after the stream is done. Because I like keeping connected with you. You have eleven minute d uh, oh direct videotapes. Oh, okay. Oh, that's for your camcorder you got. <clears throat> you're too young to know this reference, but you're becoming like our Paul Schaefer here for. <laughs> Uh, Black Star yes. EDM is in. Hi, I haven't seen you for a yes. while. Oh, uh, excellent. Thank you for coming back. Yes. How is your uh, sup on sup is going? <laughs> we had that discussion the last time uh, we had a connection. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great channel. Yeah. Um, 
uh, one hour of work left, so I'm getting real excited. Well, so a time to bring on. I'd say. By the time we could be at uh, at home, we're still gonna be here. So <laughs> 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 I don't know how, but it always go past the time. How awesome is that? Hi, I love the name of it. Yeah. How awesome is yeah. that? <laughs> Oh my god. That is so cool. <laughs> There's some handles that I'm like, God, why didn't I think of this? Well, between the best friend in your thread and how awesome yeah, yeah, that yeah. following yeah. after one each other. Oh my god, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um okay, I gotta pause this here because I think our internet gets a little bit slow today for some reason. There we go. We close everything here. My uh, goodness. Side by side. Uh, okay. It's doing good now. I'm reaching out to 24/7 music live streams to find people who are truly interested in what I post. Nice connecting with people with similar taste in music. So exactly. Cool. And that's the one thing that does suck with the way YouTube's going. We're talking about like you know un unsubbing people and stuff because you get channels like this and they unsub you, and it's not that you don't think of you. It's just there's so many going right now through, and then I'll see you in a post. I'm like, Jesus, it's been two weeks since I heard from them. I know. Yeah, I, I hate that. I, I think yesterday you were going through the listing and, and you were mentioning four. Uh, four. Four yesterday in like an hour. Uh, that that I, we know. Yeah. We check on a regular basis. Yep. And all of a sudden it wasn't there anymore. So, I mean, we know why it happens and, and yep. you know, it just. <laughs> James Cox's channel. It's literally I've pressed the bell six times in the last two weeks. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, so it, every it, time. You're just gonna manually. It just <laughs> about that. Uh, it should be automatic, but it's not. You gotta go and do everything manually. So. And uh, how awesome is that? Is, is just a... starting. Only has thirty six supporters. Okay. How awesome! How awesome is is that? Only has thirty six supporters. So guys, please. This is a clean we're... channel. Yes, yeah. No swearing. No bad stuff. Okay. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading chat. <laughs> the bell doesn't work. Mine yeah. doesn't anyway. I get no notifications of new videos from any people uh, I'm subscribed to. That's right. Uh, yeah, I can't rely on that. Can't rely on it. Gotta do it manually. Unfortunately, that's what just we gotta do. Uh, just came. Uh, I just came across a person who is beginning to try and make his own music. I talked with him and ended up following him so I can keep up with his journey. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's what it's all about yeah. is connecting and getting together as, you know, as creators. And we have discovered so many amazing channels during this uh, journey of our own and, you know, connected even past the channels that's, and that's what this is all about <clears throat> is to get to know you guys yep. beyond your channel there's so much more to you than a channel you know it's just a tiny little piece of you it might take over your life for yep. a while or bigger or smaller part but uh there is more behind and and it's not ch channels connecting it's people behind them that is connecting and that's what we love so much about uh these interviews that we do well it's not even an interview it's a chit chat and, and talk um about life uh, a little bit of channels yes of course it's a spotlight uh you know we want to support channels but we mainly just want to know more about you so it's great uh by the way getting back to that it's great to connect beer belly travelers welcome 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 there is an amazing channel yes I am so glad. There was another one. Like there, the, we were talking, uh, guys, about um, YouTube on on subbing people and stuff like that. And there was a great example. She came on ours, and she's like, uh, um, that. Um, oh, uh, sorry, because I'm trying to get our guest on here at the same time. Was saying that same problem. Like they came on ours, and she said, "I didn't realize the bell was unchecked." You know? Yeah, I know. So, You're gonna it, just uh, do this manually, as I said. Gregory's in too. Uh, Thank you for coming in. Hi. And he's in from both of your channels at the same time, multitasking. Uh, Gregory has his channel that you guys know about. Mm. And he also has a channel, The Wedding 911, that he talked about on our live stream uh, last week. Uh, so go support that if you haven't yet, uh, all and everything about weddings, especially if you're getting married soon. Um, so uh, thank you for two thumbs up, by the way. Yes. Uh, and 
Okay, that's interesting. So once again, we did a dry run with our guest uh, before the stream. Yeah, and, right and he now, was so gracious, like he was ready to do it and everything else. And, and it looks like we have run again in some kind of technical difficulties, but that's life. That's why this is Google Hangouts. This is Google Hangouts. It's great when it works great, and it's one pain when it wants to be balky. Yeah, the question yeah. is, Otter, uh, uh, are you using the same device to log in? Because that might be the problem. Yeah. Is it a laptop? Hopefully something more. He's uh, using his PC, and I told him to uh, to get off because okay. we can't run, run, so you can try that right now. So okay, <laughs> let's cross our. Well, finger. we're just gonna keep connecting with you yeah. guys uh, while we're trying to get our guest on. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, couldn't find that song. L O L. He says L O F says. Um, and guys, too, make sure you um, make sure you. Uh, check everybody out here because there's awesome supporters you know that's the nice thing it's not just for the new ones sometimes we miss one or two that we thought we had and it's a good way to too this is a great chance to see something you know and you just check and make sure that you are still connected you know make sure you still have your yeah. bell on and that and, trailer yeah. park guy hi all oh, so nice to see you excellent in. this guy has like the best morning channel i've ever seen it is it's like Howard Stern with true and utter uh, 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 integrity to it. I loved it. I, 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 it's not even, to be honest, not my genre that I would usually watch. And I was just like hooked. I, oh, my God. It was so, yeah. it's just so amazing. Uh, and I hope to have you on as yeah, yeah. talking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I, was I, trying to, I was trying to build a... <laughs> well... I don't know if you can see me now. I, I was so excited. Oh. I, could, I couldn't help yeah. but tell you guys. But, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, it's just amazing. It's yeah. just so different. So crazy. <laughs> guys, we got a great mix here. So definitely be checking everybody out, supporting each other. There's uh, um, We're full of amazing channels here. Like, I'm just looking in the list. You couldn't ask for better friends than what you see. Oh, we have them in, Gregory. Don't oh. worry. And uh, uh, we do that as well before. Uh it just sometimes doesn't work exactly as we would like to. Oh. Um, and it's not only about a guest as much as we love them. It's also about you guys, too. So we don't mind chatting a little bit more with you. Yep. Uh, uh, Jeff One. Hi. Welcome. Jeff One. Yes, I, I, well, I, if that isn't reason enough for support and bell for trailer for a guy, that's right. Yeah. And you got to go and check out his. His stream, it's just awesome. It's uh, just something amazing. Now we're going to go to our very patient <laughs> guest, the man of the hour. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to <laughs> you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear. Our studio. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering which one you picked. So I thought I was such a happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Yay! My kids are going to be upset that they didn't get to be in that. Uh oh, we can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Hold on one we second. Can't hear you. No, nope. we're only reading your lips. Can you hear me now? I think, Andrew, you have muted it. No, I looked. Did I? Yeah. No. Oh, no, I yeah. did. Okay. Can you hear me now? Mute it. Okay, and we are back to the chat. <laughs> at the top of your screen, if you can hear me, look at the top, and you'll see like uh, there's going to be some microphone signs in that, and there's probably a mute button yeah. up there. Uh, it's it's not muted. Oh, you can hear him. We can't. So it's something on our side. Okay, oh, let's hang on me a put second. on YouTube on. Oh, oh no! I can't. What? Oh, I. <laughs> I fixed it. All right. Hello. Good. Yeah, Hi. that was on our side this time. <laughs> we are really rolling it today. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, technology, right? <laughs> Few wires oh. crisscrossed, and then we can't hear it. I'm so glad you caught us on a very professional night. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Hey, I have as many technical problems, so no worries from my end. <laughs> so everybody knows what's going on here. I have a home theater system, and that's where I run all the audio through. And sometimes I have to jump back to the other one because I have stuff downloading or uploading, and that's what kills the quality. So I got to jump back, slow everything, stop everything there, and then come back over to here. So once again, 
Send all hate mail care of P.O. Box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Well, happy birthday to you, my friend. Thank you so much. <laughs> so glad to have you here. Oh, I'm I'm glad to be here. I I I uh I've been watching a lot of the streams, so it's so new to me to be on another stream. <laughs> it's I get you, it's even weird to have one. We joke every night before we hit the button, we look like a scene out of Armageddon, yeah. like you know, <laughs> please don't crash too hard. <laughs> it's like a spaceship. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, sometimes everything is flying. Like, I think on one of the streams yesterday, the day before, you can see actually the camera all yeah. falling apart, and, and we almost trying to swear there and not be realizing we're still on. Well, so, I mean, one, of my, one of my first streams, I, I streamed with this thing, and <laughs> it, it holds the phone in place, but I didn't realize my leg was shaking. So the whole time, the drawing is just... It, it oh, oh, my God. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's it's growing pains. You know, you always learn something new. So now well, I have, it. I actually have something up here. <laughs> yeah, we, I want to see that after. I want you to, if you, it will be, like we did a while ago, I'll get you to tilt the camera after. Yeah, so yeah, can see yeah. I can tilt it right now if you want. Sure, let's do it. This is this. Let's see what even his dad built. Oh wow! So it's basically wow. holding holding the camera in place. That is so smart. So you when know. I draw, they capture. That's why all my videos, all you see is my. Uh, ashy hands. <laughs> well, your hands are, they speak for themselves, my friend. You have, uh, I you. was so blown away that night. I've, and I've seen people drawing on here, you know, but there's somebody that sometimes just really, it's like music. Certain songs really connect with you, certain musicians. And yeah. that night, I just couldn't stop watching. Like, I was so <laughs> just, I, I love your talent. I love your work. Well, I thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I like to mix, uh, like, uh, it's called Retro Wave. Yep. I like to put that in there. Sometimes I'll put meditation music, but uh, just so that if people are watching at home, they can relax. And then it, some people tell me they they watch it to go to sleep. So I guess oh. I guess I'm I'm human melatonin. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that if you can give somebody a good night's sleep. Hey, yeah. it's a watch time for you. Everybody wins. Yeah, it counts as watch time exactly. Yep. <laughs> I got two guys the other night that told me in a stream that my hour long train video they use it sometimes to sleep. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, they like that da -dunk, da -dunk, da -dunk, da -dunk, like that sound. And I'm like, okay, I guess. I never really thought of it that way, but sure, when in Rome. So. I, I always I can always relax when, when I'm on a train or a car ride because just yeah. the noises from outside, it's just the ambient noise. Just it is, and it's calming. You think it's a loud, booming noise, but even on when it's on video, the train whistle isn't so daunting as if you were standing outside the horn, I mean. Right. You know, everything's more even keel. So, yeah, I thought about it more, and I was like, okay, I kind of get it. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody has those little quirks. Like, uh, I know that normally when I'm at home, the only way I can fall asleep is by putting on action movies. Yes. <laughs> wow. I guess the explosions calm me down. <laughs> I can't sleep with quiet. My sister's house is like sleeping in a morgue. Like, 9 o'clock, everything goes out, and I think at first that I pay my bills today. And at four in the morning, I'm thinking, why didn't I punch Tony in the head in grade four? I cover my whole life and everything I've ever questioned. <laughs> and it's like, please, morning come, you know, because I can't, I need uh, noise to sleep. <laughs> I was raised in the city, so I'm used to noise everywhere. <laughs> so when it's quiet, it's kind of unnerving, like a horror movie. <laughs> at which city were you raised in? Oh, uh, Rochester. Oh, you, so, you were. So you lived your whole life in the in the area. Uh, pretty much. I was born in Puerto Rico, but then my parents brought us here when I was like one. So I, you know, I'm I'm pretty pretty. Uh, For know, all intents and purposes, you've grown your New York. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I'm cool. Canadian at heart because yes. I spent so much time there. <laughs> same as a uh, be, uh, best friend in your thread is in here. She's from the same area as you're in, and she says the same thing. We're got, she wants us to sponsor her to come. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing, because I've always thought about moving, and I said, well, the one thing that I love the most is being so close to Niagara Falls, because it's a cheap little getaway, it's yep. an hour drive from here, and you can't beat that. Nope. Nowhere else in the country, unless you live in Texas, you can go to Mexico, but that's a little scary, you know? <laughs> you go to the wrong parts. <laughs> That's right. And then here you can go, you know, Canada yeah. and States. It's all so many things there. Right like even Montreal, people don't realize just how close we are to the U.S. border. It's literally about 50 minute drive. And then you're crossing over to Rose's Point well, and New York as well. Montreal's <laughs> nice because if we want to go to Montreal, we just take we take the car going east and then just shoot up. 
Yeah. And it, it's almost as long as it takes to get to Toronto. I'll just maybe add another hour or two. That's, so. that's true. You're kind of in the middle part, you know, so you get <laughs> access to both. We always said the Americans always loved Montreal for two things, was for the strip clubs and the drinking age. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, because 19 or 18 there, right? 18, yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time uh, I went up there. I, w I just turned 19. Oh. And everyone told me in Canada, drinking age is 19. I was like, I got to have a beer. But I didn't realize uh, Montreal, the, 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 the beer is stronger. It's yeah. not – American beer. So I had two beers and I was already sleeping in the hotel. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm a lightweight. It packs a punch. It does. Oh, yeah. And I don't it's like that. Bat. <laughs> like, we were talking with Rick from the Corn Life Network from yeah. Iowa. Yeah, yeah. He's originally from California and he's a huge Labatt fan and stuff oh. like that. Yeah, he even crossed the border illegally from yeah. Walmart and didn't know about that. The, the Labatt here is nowhere near as strong as the one up there. Yeah, and it's I, different. Oh, uh, I think I had the black label. Oh, that stuff got a kick. Yeah, that for yeah. for commercial available beer, black label is strong stuff. It's, it was a hockey puck to the face. For yeah, sure. <laughs> I love that. That's a, that'll end up in a Labatt commercial soon. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Why is this American on a Canadian commercial? <laughs> well, you guys own Tim Hortons now, so yes, our biggest chain. You know, you know the chain of uh, donut places in Canada, Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my, my kids love the Tim bits, and my Is wife he... loves the coffee. But the Canadian Tim Hortons can't beat. Or it's so much better than the American one. I don't know if it's you know. But now they're all owned by the states. It's not Canadian anymore. It's owned by a conglomerate out of Florida, I believe. Yeah, everything's owned by a conglomerate here. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if I have a tag somewhere on my body owned by Verizon. <laughs> Your right arm and your left leg, but the rest is owned by Shell. Yeah, we we sign our soul away everywhere. We go, so. <laughs> Who knows who's gonna own me? Uh, I get scared putting my art on Facebook. I'm like Mark Zuckerberg gonna own all my art. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch him. He's pretty sneaky. <laughs> He's been getting roasted over the coals lately. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well. Everything's so weird over here. It's like when when my wife we cross the border, we're like, oh, we're at peace. Oh. It, we don't have to worry about all the crap that's going on over here. It's like every day something bad's happening. <laughs> well, it's just the population size. Like a lot of people don't realize. I said the other night that I've seen people when I said in the chat were shocked. Canada is the second biggest country in the world in size, but in population, we're the population of California. Yeah, it's because it's so spread out. It's yeah, like, so we don't have to deal with. The you're just gonna see two bears. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. There's not a lot to contend with. So, yeah. and 75 percent of us live within 100 kilometers of the U.S. border. Oh, see that, and, and and I think that's why you either get the Canadians who have they they kind of sympathize with us. And then there's the ones that are like, yeah, you guys asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> but Canada's not all great yet, and I've always pushed it. Like my wife from Latvia at first, you know, they they especially in the country part, they don't get as many tourists and they kind of feel like they paint North America as like a one picture, you know, especially Canada and the U S they kind of see us as a North American. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and I try to explain to them and they're like, well, you guys kind of go in with your big army and I'm laughing. I'm like, my God, you got a bigger army than us and you're a tiny country. <laughs> We're like, this, these guys got canoes and shotguns for the love of God. You know? Well, I, I've, I've been saying since I was younger, I've always wanted to move to Germany. And, yeah. and my wife's like, well, you know, she, until she, you know, I told her about it. She didn't realize that it's, you know, a little bit more advanced than we are. So it's like. <laughs> Well, most of Europe, you know, is is a way ahead of us. Even in Latvia, I see stuff that we don't have here. You know, it's... like chips on the uh, cards was a great example. Yeah, uh, for bank cards, and we have had them. I don't know for fifteen years at least, probably. And in Canada, they just ten started. years or more. No, Canada had we had them. Well, yeah, but now we're about six, seven years. Yeah. The states is literally just starting now. I think two years ago, yeah. right? Well, it's just you. You watch a uh, like a. Uh... Uh, football games from overseas and you see how futuristic the stadiums look and you're like you watch the football games here and everything's dilapidated <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no i know i know, I know. Thing, you know? <laughs> they pay for everything like you take a, a we took a train one time from the airport in oslo norway into town oh. and it, was, it costs like 70 dollars for the train ride for like a 20 minute train ride but the train is fantastic you it's know 
you get what you pay for. <laughs> but over there, they don't do these things just because we're in North America. We do them all the time. Right. Like going for a drive. Uh, I know I'm doing in kilometers. I'm, I'm sort of awful at converting back and forth. Oh, I can convert it. <laughs> okay, well, excellent. That's, that works for me. I uh, Over there, like they used to go to their summer house, 80 kilometers was a big drive. You know, they would stop and have lunch somewhere, then continue on. And it was a whole morning event. It's a slower pace of life. Yeah, it's a slower that yeah. <laughs> that's that's not <laughs> lying either. Sometimes I have trouble adjusting to their way of like speeding up sometimes, but yeah, I, I you know, as an artist, I sometimes wish life was a little slower, but whenever I have time, it's usually late at night. So that's why my streams are like one, two in the morning, because that's when I have time. If I had time during the day, it, I'd probably be drawing all day. <laughs> yeah, no, I, honestly, I would rather do work at night. Like, I, if we didn't have the kids and could work around the schedule, I would love to do a, this stream at, like, 1 to 4 in the morning. Exactly. Well, she's the complete opposite. She likes doing the daytime stuff. <laughs> I love the night. <laughs> I just, no, I, I, li I like uh, evenings. I just don't like waking up early. If I wouldn't have to wake up, but you know, 6.30 and sometimes 5 due to our daughter. <laughs> yeah, my daughter <laughs> holding her eye open it. like this. Are you up yet? Are you up yet? <laughs> yeah, I actually do feel more productive, like, you know, at 8, 9, 10, you know, and later on than in the morning, but just have to wake up, unfortunately. But we had to go see a notary. We were having trouble over there where her mom had passed away. We had got some property and stuff. Oh, and we worked it out. Yeah, it was, she was young. She was only 55. Oh, so it was enough. You know, you're already having that kind of hard time. Now, this is the way they look at on time in Europe. Our appointment was at 10 o'clock in the morning. It was literally less than 10 minutes to 10. And they look at each other and say, okay, yeah, we better start getting ready. It's like a 20-some minute drive just to get there. And I'm like pulling every hair out of my head. Will you get off your asses and go? <laughs> we, you know, I can't, I'm going to start swearing. i got to be but careful. But it's different when <laughs> everybody does that. It's, yeah. just more, it's just more relaxed. Yeah. It's... it's 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 something. <laughs> then on the other hand, when we went went to Iceland, they are even slower than that. Yeah. And even I, with all my slow Baltic emotion <laughs> life, I found it too slow. So because <laughs> they're you know, you gotta slow down and enjoy everything, you know. And, yeah, and, I like slowing down when I don't have something to do. But when I got something to do, I want to get it done. Oh, That's my man. heart part, like that. That's uh. That's what, what was really frustrating when I used to do conventions because uh, I would have to get ready that Friday, get in the car, pack all my stuff. Then when I get there, there's really no time to relax. And then the next day is the convention. Yep. And then you're dealing with thousands of people all day talking. By the end of the show, you're so drained. You just want like that moment of just uh, where everything just comes together. Just have a cup of coffee and relax. But you, there's no slowdown button until yeah. one day back home. <laughs> Kick your feet up. <laughs> and it is. You come home more tired than you ever thought you would. Like you oh, absolutely. <laughs> I worked for a big music company. I had trade shows in California, and it was in the wintertime. So what did everybody say when we were going? Oh, they poor, you get to go to California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but okay, we went to California, but do you think we saw the sun? No, it was 16, 18-hour days. <laughs> And then the time difference of three hours, you know, like God. I don't think people take into account jet lag. You know? No, and they think in a convention center they don't realize that you don't bring the scenery in with you. You know, a convention center is the same anywhere you go. It's gray walls, gray ceilings, and awful uh, overpriced rest. food that you never get to eat. <laughs> oh yeah, ten dollar little personal pan pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> what a rip off! Eh? It makes you. I I used to take my laptop bag and then just shove it with protein bars and stuff <laughs> until after the show. I don't blame you. Why spend on that garbage? It's, and it's literally garbage. Like, you know, it's something if yeah. you were anywhere else, you would never even dream of putting in your face, you know? It, it, it's just like, it, it, all they do is go to like uh, like a no frills place, grab a bunch of frozen stuff and then just microwave it. Yeah. No, no, it's not fine cuisine or anything like that. No, no, it's all microwave food. <laughs> and they jack the price up 20%. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I'm going to fast food. <laughs> at least you're getting what you're getting, you know? At that yeah, point. It's, it's junk food, but it's a quarter of the price. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good way of putting it, actually. <laughs> oh, no, that's... It's not a. It's not as glamorous as people think. I mean, it's fun, and you get to do some really interesting, get to meet some great people, but there is a, a downside to all of it, and you come back completely, utterly exhausted, you know? <laughs> I. That's why I, I know that my doctor's just like, 
well, you can do a couple of shows here and there. And I'm, I'm telling myself, I'm like, I want to do something at home where I can just reach thousands of people at once. And that's what made me want to come up with the, with the YouTube channel. And it's already working. Cause you know, everybody, everybody's positive. Everybody gives me great input and, yeah, I just try to be a positive person. So, <laughs> and then and you get into circles, you know, and you get to start drawing more positive people around you. But you have to have a positive channel to start the, for that to build on, and that you really do. Like <laughs> even the first night I was there and I met you, and you're drawing away. Like I wouldn't even be able to talk to anybody else with what you're doing, and you're <laughs> inviting at a nice pace to everything. I, I that's what I found. Some it wasn't just your artwork, which is spectacular. It was the light talk. <laughs> you know, engaging, but like I, I don't know, and the music playing and stuff it's like very that. Calming. I yeah, yeah. Know. Well, it wasn't calming when I first came in. I thought you were listening to Halloween, but then you told me, like you said, of course, copyright music. So. Well, when I yeah, was listening, that's, that's the tough like, part. Is uh, a lot of the music I like. Uh, it's on the borderline because it's a lot of indie artists from YouTube. But the problem is because they're on YouTube, it counts as a copyright. Yeah. So. I'm like, well, I can just play meditation music or video game music. And then I found retro wave, which is kind of like video game music with techno. It's good though. I, I, I was really into it. Like afterwards, I was getting, you know, I was really starting to dig it. It was a, uh... yeah, well it has to match my room. Cause this is kind of like the eighties and nineties all jammed into one room. <laughs> I got to tell you something. Cause I know I'll forget. And then I'll kick myself tonight at two o'clock in the morning when I remember your comment you made, remember I told you to go check out the one video I said I recommend for you to see that I made yeah, brought back the 80s? Yeah. Your comment is that made me the happiest to think of any comment I've ever had since I started here. <laughs> Thank you. you. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> well, when I'm watching it, all I'm thinking of is when I used to go to the arcades and they have all the Sega rallies and all the all those like racing arcades and, and simulators and yep. in the music and it just it, it, it was like a flashback. <laughs> I loved it. I, I was telling Xenia, I'm like, know, you gotta, yeah. come back, come back, man. You, you gotta see what you want. Because it's nice when somebody appreciates your art. And as you as an artist, you get that. And I really do pour my heart. Like that video probably has about 40 hours of editing. To get yeah, you can see it because uh, it, it almost uh, it looks like a Hollywood movie. So, <laughs> like, I brought back those dark shades from the '80s. I wanted that look. You know, that was like I said, it was always the music video I could never make when I was growing up. You know. Uh, I'm sorry if my 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 computer's beeping, but I'm getting the happy birthday messages on Facebook. So let me mute that. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> oh, it's your birthday. You, you deserve we, those. Right. I, I know, but it just keeps beeping. I'm like, it's kind of distracting. <laughs> oh, it's distracting you. I don't want. I, but as, for us, it's not a problem at all. No, the um, I uh, with with the drawing is uh, I I noticed that when I got, went on YouTube, I was like, how can I make my channel different? Yeah, and I notice a lot of like you said, there's a lot of artists on YouTube, but a lot of them don't live stream their actual drawings. Yeah, it, it's mostly edited. So I'm like, maybe I should start live streaming the art and just talking while I do it because I learned how to talk and draw from doing conventions. Yes, <laughs> that's art. I'm like, might as well just try it out, and it and it works. So I I I get more feedback from the live streams than I did on with the uh, with the sped up videos. And then in between, I throw those gaming videos, and then I have unboxings with my daughter because she loves. That is really great too. I was watching one. Well, that's where I got your picture from. Was one of those unboxings? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the Skylanders one. <laughs> no, she she had a blast with that because uh, I don't know if Toys R Us is closing in in Canada, but yeah, yeah. Here we found one that was closing before all of them decided to close. Okay. We found Skylanders toys for like twenty nine cents. And oh my god. Well, they yeah. haven't started the liquidation here yet, I think. But I think they might be able. I thought they were able. They thought to save some of the. Candy. Thanks, me. <laughs> but that was like a couple of weeks ago. Maybe now oh, the yeah. axe was put well, into it. I hope it. not, because then I would like to buy all the toys. <laughs> it, 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 it's very weird here in Canada because Canada is a not a pioneer, but we do a lot of work in advancing web programming. Okay. So we have a lot of companies do that, but we're actually way more reluctant to do shopping online. Like Amazon took a lot longer to catch on here. Buying from Walmart took a lot longer. I think the biggest problem too is people don't realize that when it does catch on and things become pretty much internet shopping only, the yeah. price is just going to shoot up. Well, exactly. <laughs> and I went into, uh, we have a big store here. Uh, well, Sears. No, it was the Sears one that was closing. <laughs> 
see it. And this lady is all excited talking to the saleswoman going, oh my God, then these specials are so good. Do you not realize this poor lady is losing her job? Right, right. And she's I, always, like, I always try to be sympathetic when I go to a closing store because I'm like, I always ask them, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of sorry you're losing your job. You know, do you have anything lined up? You know, because they're yeah. human. They're you know, human. A lot of people treat retail, uh, retail employees like crap, you know, and they don't get paid enough as it is. You <laughs> treat got them like 100% a 100% right there. <laughs> There's what happened with the Tim Hortons in Canada right now. I've seen, uh, who was it posted a while ago? Philip. Yeah. Ontario just raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And Tim Hortons stores were refusing to pay their employees that way. So they started cutting out their lunch breaks. They started cutting uh, out uh, for the food that they would get for being there so long. There was a bunch of things they started Yeah, turning. and then uh, just recently they started big renovations for $2 billion all across Canada instead of raising the uh, salaries. Yeah. So it uh, uh, went down from being the second most popular brand in Canada to being number 50. Does the second cup still exist in Canada? I haven't seen one in a while. Uh, yes, but there is very few, yeah. uh, very few locations. I think McDonald's and Tim Hortons kind of took it over. Yeah. Especially after Tim Hortons joined with uh, uh, which which one is the Burger? <laughs> yeah, burger King, I think yeah. they joined. But yeah, now, I'm pretty after, sure. <laughs> after this, what they did with the salaries and, and spending money on renovations instead, uh, people are just joining mcdonald's more yeah so to say and it's unfortunate because yeah. it started as a great story you know and, and yeah. very canadian pride and and yeah and now it's not I, at all so you can't think of canada without thinking of tim hortons no exactly yeah. it's every kid on the saturday morning commercial with like it's like the cornflakes in the states it's as canadiana as it gets you know yeah well you i, I always think of tim hortons uh canadian tire mm. um uh no frills Yes. And uh, what's another Canadian staple? Giant uh, Tiger. Uh, Swiss, Swiss Chalet. Swiss Chalet, <laughs> yeah, my yes, God. Yeah. So those are the four that I'm always thinking of when I think of Canada. And, and if I see Tim Hortons leave, it's going to be kind of heartbreaking. See, we don't have those in Quebec, Swiss Chalet. A lot of the stores didn't come in because of the language laws. They just decided, or they bought like the like staples, uh, of course, you know. Is always right. in Canada, but in Quebec, it's called Bureau en Gros, like big office. <laughs> and they bought those out and kept the name so they wouldn't have to worry about the language laws. Every, so, everything's, so, everything's so literal in French. It's, oh, yeah. It, it's crazy. <laughs> it, it is. It, and it's like uh, people don't realize this, but there's language laws about signage. And to have any town in Quebec have bilingual signs, you have to have at least 50% English in the town. Oh, and the I letters have to be twice the size more predominant than the English. And uh, they have language plates that go along with little rulers measuring these damn letters. And you can be <laughs> fined. You can be a big... F I got caught. This is a true story. We I work for the biggest private distributor in Canada uh, that does Marshall amplifiers and all these brands. Yeah. And I worked for them at Jam Industries. And I was doing work on our website. So I was pulling pieces off, adding, pulling... And for maybe a couple of days, I had taken part of the French one off to redo it. It was going back. And my boss showed up with a subpoena for him and I to appear in a court in Hull, Quebec. <laughs> that seems because, and this is not a kidding, this is the honest God truth. They had it measured to the point we had 19% more English on our website than we had French. The <laughs> fine was upwards of $50,000. And to get out of the $50,000, they actually had to come in for four weeks. We had to change all the systems in all the company. Probably about 400,000 lines had to be translated in both languages. <laughs> Xerox machines will only handle one language at a time. They had to pull the chips out and put French chips into it to satisfy them. <laughs> that's that's ex so excessive. You know, oh, it's, gest it's Gestapo tactics. That's exactly yeah. what it is. It's, it's un, I mean, it's, it is getting better. They're starting to get tired of it. There was a restaurant the other year that got hit because their menu was in French. So they wanted <laughs> to use um, these weird, remember the names for pasta and stuff like that they had? Yeah, we had a pasta gate where they had to translate <laughs> Italian names for pasta, like, you know, like fettuccine and linguine. They all of a sudden had to name them some kind of French word. Like, how, yeah. how do you do that? That words that people never even heard of in their life. And we're talking French people never heard in their yeah. life. You might as well just get rid of the laws and just to make everybody speak Spanish. It's a, oh, it's yay! It's a happy medium. I, I love, love it. That. I love it. I love it. That's a great point. I like that. I you might 
we'll have to get you up here as an ambassador or something. Straight us <laughs> out. Yeah, the new this... of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Philip Cockrum says Timmy's a Canadian institution. Too bad they treat their people poorly, and the sign police is just a joke, but a bad one. <laughs> it is a bad joke. It yeah. is a bad joke. I, I that I, I if if things like were like that here, comic books would would go out of business because you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine a comic book with English text and then the French text underneath. You know, they would just release two books, one in French and one in English, you know? Except for a few English specialty stores like Walmart and that. They can't sell books. They can't sell toys unless there's a French equivalent or <laughs> French is on the box clearly as well. well Even English schools. Like, say you moved here with, say you moved to Quebec tomorrow. You immigrated here. Your daughter wants to go to school. She can't go to English schools. She has to go to French because she has no grandfather clause. Wow. It, well, my, my kids probably wouldn't care because they watch uh, Paw Patrol. Right. Oh, yeah. But then they put it on the Canadian dubbing. So they're just listening. Oh. To, they're, they're listening to French. And what? I'm like, you girls understand that? And they're like, no, but it's cute. Oh, <laughs> oh they're cute. My God. <laughs> How old are you girls? Uh, one's ten and the other one is six, so they're they're uh, they're getting up there. <laughs> oh, our, our son is eleven and our daughter's seven, so they're kind of in the same. Yeah. <laughs> they're in the same age. <laughs> yeah, the same Paw Patrol and everything. And then I got one twenty-year-old, so yeah. <laughs> I cover the gamut. Uh, <laughs> so don't ever say I don't understand an age because I do. <laughs> Some point in time, I've covered it at least once. <laughs> oh, uh, it, it's tough because the my my oldest is she's uh ten going on thirty. She mm. thinks. Oh, you know, and then the little one, she's just so hyper. And oh my god, it's like I, looking in our book here. <laughs> Same thing here. Are you sure you're not talking about our kids? Did we get drunk? <laughs> oh my! I think it's just the yeah. age range. You know, they they grow out of it. You know. Oh yeah. Eventually, it's so gonna turn into a ten year old. <laughs> it's but it's it's fun. You know, they 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 like the fact that dad draws. You know. And so they're they're always trying to get into my live streams, or they'll they'll try to draw on my tablet, and so it's, well, it's they're taking, they're taking they'll, they'll take it over. The, the little one actually said, "Well, Daddy, the name of the company is Otero Studios. My last name's Otero, so I'm oh. part of it." Oh. <laughs> smart, smart. Yeah, That's I think great. you got an executive on your hands. <laughs> yeah, I told her I make her the COO. I don't deal with all that stuff. That is too funny. <laughs> Oh. I just draw, <laughs> and I was going to ask you about the name of your company, so that explains that. That's very yeah. <laughs> See, we're yeah, well, the, things, folks. <laughs> well, the the thing was is originally when I was in high school, I um I came up with a company name, but then when uh when I was in college, I, I realized that it was already trademarked. So uh, I, I kept coming up with ideas, and I was like, I'll just use my last name because you know that's not trademarked. Exactly. And, and it's, it's, a, a, <laughs> it's a cool last name. It really works for a business name. To tell you the truth, I really like it. Yeah. Well, it's it, you actually say it correctly, but there's people who butcher my last name. But it doesn't matter. I mean, as long as it's unique, you know, and and you don't see a lot of Oteros around. And if you do, they're related. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, there's somebody in the family. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because I found uh, I did a convention in uh, Pennsylvania once. And a lady comes up to me. She's like, because my banner says Sal Otero. And uh, she she said, uh, my last name's Otero. So we go over and it comes to, I come to find out she's my cousin from Puerto Rico. So, oh, my, my God. God almighty. That's amazing, though. <laughs> yeah. world, you know? It is a small world, my friend. That, that's proof of it right there. <laughs> Xenia's name is hard, too. And everybody spells it because it's it starts with a K, but you pronounce it with like an X, like Xena, like Xena wow. Princess Warrior. That's a cool so, name. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like Xenia, you, you, just the end of the X. But she goes to the doctor's office, and they always come out, and they're like, Kuh, Kuh. she's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> she goes, <laughs> yeah, they all, uh, there's always people, like I always laugh, one lady, a uh, family friend, uh, she started to call me Sin because she... <laughs> Couldn't pronounce it, so she said, "No, I'm gonna call you Sin." So I'm well, it's, sometimes it's nice to get a uh, a nickname from someone, and it's like that personal nickname from yeah. that person. You know, nobody else calls you that except that's that right. One. It's something special. It's a bond, just you and that person. I agree. That person. So 
I, I, see, I, I think that <laughs> I see somebody asked your name and they are. Uh, the yeah, chat. you answered. Yeah, You're yeah. very fast. Yeah, I, I like that. You're both active on live I, and on the chat. So <laughs> I used to be, I used to be in IT, so my hands are like like the flash. <laughs> that ties me into what I want to ask you. Do you want to talk a little bit about like like I mean not you know you don't need to talk about the day you were born where you kind of led to where you are today like just kind of a short summary on things you'd like to touch on yeah well um uh, not too long ago I um I hurt my back when I was working in IT and uh you know I was fixing phones and computers and stuff and uh then uh when I was injured I had all this time to myself and my wife kept telling me she's like why don't you draw that's what you love to do so I kept practicing and practicing and then uh, I finally got the uh, cover on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of shot my shot my wow. That's you know, my notoriety to say you know and so yeah. I invited to shows and stuff and uh, since 2015 I was traveling and then this past September I got really sick and then that's when I decided to just make the YouTube channel I don't have to worry about uh, you know all the all the traveling and you know making myself worse you know yeah. this, and this is it right here i don't know if you can see it yeah no please bring it close everybody. oh wow that is so in and nickelodeon didn't notice but i put uh rochester in the background so oh wow that is so that's so cool. cool i love that yeah. your own signature to it i mean what a thing to bring to a portfolio i mean unbelievable and, and and since then I, I try to um you know apply for other positions you know like uh, I applied at Nickelodeon Animation okay and uh, Blizzard and all those but it, those things take forever to get a call back from yeah so it's kind of like you get a call and say can you be here in two days like it's gonna yeah. be like bang or like lightning that's what scares me I don't I do not want like a phone call in two days hey uh, we like your portfolio can you be here tomorrow yep. <laughs> I have a real part-time job too, so I can't just up and leave. Uh, so, you know, it, it's it's fun, uh, but it, it could be stressful because you don't you never know if uh, if tomorrow somebody's gonna forget you. So and that's why the YouTube channel works because someone just type in my name, boom, they find my YouTube channel yeah. and they keep up with me. It's not like, hey, this guy just fell off the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. No, I, I, I can't get over you around that the ninja Turtle. Like that's so cool. Oh, that's so. Oh, amazing. I, I, and when I got it, I said, okay, I don't need to do anything else. My dream is accomplished. But <laughs> definitely, I mean, that's. Uh, Look, talking oh, about the small world, uh, Hellas and Heathens Annalise is saying we actually have a connection to sell through my brother, who is a comic book book writer and runs Danger Entertainment. Yeah, it's this is how small the world is. So uh, <laughs> that's crazy. A, a couple of years ago, um, Michael, her brother, was doing a Kickstarter on Facebook. Okay. I had no idea who he was, but then through his Kickstarter, I found his his podcast. And I, I love podcasts because when I was traveling all the time, that's what I listened to. And so when uh, you know, we became friends after that. And then he he always plugged his his sister's uh, podcast. So then I caught I caught it, uh, and and then when I saw Halos and Heathens video, I saw the banner for the podcast. I'm like, oh jeez, oh this my god! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just had to tell him, and then I told Michael on Facebook. I'm like, dude, I found your sister on YouTube. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my. This is amazing. <laughs> So crazy! It is is so unbelievable how these things work. You know, like, out of billions of videos yeah. on YouTube, uh, to have something like that, it's crazy. And they're a great channel. We had oh them on, God, and we had them, so much. Them, they were them. on a couple of days ago, and they were so much fun. Like love them. Well, they're they're, they're yeah. a blast to listen to. I, I oh, yeah. uh, they they made the smart choice of uh, you know putting the podcast on on YouTube because mm -hmm. yeah. What's nice is that you get the watch time if people are listening too. Yep, so, exactly. And uh, if you have YouTube Red, you can just close the window and it's still playing. So it's uh -huh. it's a uh, I don't know if it plays through YouTube Music, but you know, that's uh, cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> glad that's, it was that's really cool. No, they're very smart and they're they're very uh, genuine people. Like we, 
it's, it's, it, there's certain people you just sit on, like, you know, and you just feel like, no, I just realized it feels like you forget the cameras here and we're just talking, you know, like a, yeah. at a well, table somewhere. You know, um, a couple months ago, I would never want to, you know, show my face. It was all about the art. But yeah. then I realized, I'm like, well, people want to see the personality behind the art, you know, and uh, I know a lot of artists are kind of shy. Yeah. I got over that shyness from being at shows because you got 2,000 people walking by you and, asking yeah. questions so you have to kind of out and expose at that point <laughs> yeah and and everyone calls me a character because i'm so goofy i talk with my hands and <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i have tattoos everywhere i got earrings so it's like i stand out <laughs> oh god i find i find you very char uh charismatic i would i i really find you have a great character oh, like for talking to people in that yeah, so uh, yeah no. i i i always I, that's why I love cartoons and comic books because being larger than life, you know, life is kind of boring. So just yep. to add a little color to it, 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 it makes it fun. It's an yeah. escape and you get to create your own sub reality for a little while. Oh yeah. Well, you yeah. know, if I'm driving in the car, I think I'm the transporter. Yeah. If I had, <laughs> like Jason Statham. <laughs> and oh. if I'm playing outside with the kids, you know, I'm like, we'll, we'll always pretend we're Dragon Ball Z characters and we're throwing oh, light beams at each other. So. I, I you just gotta have fun, and and that's what you know the live streams are all about. It's like um, I, my very first live stream where I had the digital show up, and you can see me drawing on the computer. I was just saying, hey, what do you guys want to see me draw? And then I just made goofy faces, and I, my daughter even came in and she started drawing, oh. and she felt all special. <laughs> that's amazing. I told that's her, hey, you can get on. <laughs> That is so cool. Yeah, I love it. I love your I love your energy into it. It's 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 a part of you. It's not something you're doing just for. Uh, I, oh, I meant to click it. Sorry, here I'll do better. Okay. You know, it's like giving over the the the, the remote. It feels off. It's 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 something that's hard to turn off. It is. I, it is. It is. When, when I go when I go lay down, I'm like, I'm itching. I'm thinking about what's the next video I want to do. Uh, what do, what do I want to draw next? Uh, do I want to play a video game and stream it? So it's like my mind is in a hundred places and it's hard to, you know, just kind of, Hey, bring it back a little. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, no, but it, it's good to have that. I've, I feel everybody should try to find what makes them feel that way because it makes life a lot more, um, a lot more palatable. I hate using that term, but it's the only one I can think of right now because life is not always rosy and stuff like that. It's nice to have a place where you can kind of find where you can, um, uh, it's it is therapeutic to have that spot where you can make oh, yeah. it great. Well, it's um when I get down here, you know, eventually I want to make this a career as far as YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I do this, I don't think of it as a career. I'm just having fun, and it makes the time go by, and you don't really worry too much about am I going to get monetized. M my whole goal was just to reach people, and then if they want art, they can order it. But if they just want to watch, just watch. I'm not, I'm not trying to plug a, a, a Patreon or, or mm -hmm. just try to get um, money out of people. I want yeah. them to enjoy the content. If they want to enjoy it, they can subscribe. Like, I'm not going to be pushy about it. <laughs> no, you do, and that's cool. I mean, that, and you know, people respect that more. And, and it does. You, you know, the old expression: "You win more uh, fly, uh, flies with honey." That is true in that because there's nothing, you know, if it gets too pushy, that sometimes pushes people away, does the exact opposite of what you were going for. Well, it's like, um, like I used to do, like I told you, I used to do IT, but they yeah. always used to push us to sell. Yes. I, I, my strategy was always not to sell and just connect with, you know, the person, the customer. And yeah. they always tend to buy more because I'm not trying to push, hey, you need this package, you need this phone. I'd always just be like, hey, just, just uh, uh, just get what you want. If you don't want it, fine. Um, my name's Sal. I'm happy to help. And that that resonates with people. It does. We're all human in the end, and we forget that to be on the other side of whoever you're talking to at the moment. Same with YouTube. There's a disconnect sometimes we have. And a great example of it was here in Canada where uh, Best Buy and Future Shop was both owned by the same company because, of course, Best Buy bought Future Shop. <laughs> Future Shop was based on commission and Best Buy wasn't. And guess which one is left today and which one is gone? Best Buy. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and yes, size is one part, but I mean, Future Shop lasted a long time. But the big issue everybody was having with it is 
you got to have this. No, 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 no. You don't need this one. You got to have this one. This is the one's going to get you go where Best Buy, sir. Which one would you like to use? Which one, are, do you have a budget? You know, that that that's proof in the pudding that trying to force stuff down people's throats doesn't get you very far in the end. Yeah, and uh, you, I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, I go to these uh, gaming channels, and some of them, it's almost like they they're pushing their mm -hmm. Patreons, they're pushing for donations. Oh. And, it's and that, digital panhandling. Yeah, it pushes me. It, it kind of pushes me off. You know, yeah. I like the, the gaming channels where it's someone who just legit loves video games. They want to talk about it, and I, I'm there because I'm a huge retro game fan. Yeah, and, and th that's how I clear my mind so I can draw more. So I start thinking about oh, when, when I'm playing video games, I'm like, oh, that that's kind of a cool idea. Let me add that to my next piece and. <laughs> You know, it just builds builds on it. And like you said, I got a lot of 80s, uh, 80s references, 90s. Some of my favorite movies are John Carpenter movies. Oh, okay. So for Halloween, I have a whole plan for the month of, uh, of October. I'm just going to do John Carpenter uh, pieces. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I love, I love Roddy Piper, too. So, you know, They Live is like one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, my, oh my God almighty. Yes, I do. <laughs> that's such a cool idea. Can you touch a bit more on that idea for Halloween? That's really uh, well. Um, in 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 the art world, they have something called Inktober, where uh, an artist inks uh, every day for the month of October. But I said I'm going to take that one step further. I'm going to do one video every day in October, uh, and it's all going to be horror based. So um, wow. John Carpenter is not really a horror director, but to me. When I think of Halloween, I think of They Live, Assault on Precinct 13, uh, Vampires. So all those movies kind of influenced me. So I'm like, well, I'm going to take October and do that. And those are the little plans that I have for my channel is just to set it apart from the other art channels. And that, that's the thing. Very smart idea. Yeah, and by then you've already built a good fan base by the time you get to October. And then doing something like that's going to draw in a whole new crowd. Like that's so smart. That's, I, I, I hats off to you for thinking Black about Star it. Blackstar says Oktoberfest, except with pen and pad. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> or digital, or digital. Yeah. <laughs> that is well, cool. the, the thing is too, like I, I became friends with a lot of uh, video game YouTubers, and, mm -hmm. and and they're now fans of the channel. When I was there, I was a fan of their channel first. So it, it's weird how now they're they're like, we want to see more art. But I was like. I actually want to throw a little bit of everything on my channel and not just make it just art. You know, like that's why I have the gaming and the unboxings. And um, eventually I actually want to do some tutorials too for the younger kids um, because I, there's something kids see me and they think I'm a big kid, like literally like a <laughs> huge kid. So, <laughs> so they, they, they learn well because they're just focused either on my earrings or, you know, how my, how big my eyes get when I'm talking about stuff. <laughs> So they get into it, and so teaching kids is fun. And I think if uh, they can get off the garbage that's on YouTube that the kids yeah. watch, yeah, watch something educational, I think it might be good. Because yeah. my daughter watches some really bad stuff on here, and I'm like, don't watch that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. My I... Uh, so our older son, he actually enjoys. We oftentimes do. There are lots of tutorials of drawing different already yeah. known characters, but like simpler version, not as exquisite as you're doing. <laughs> But it actually shows line by line. And what yeah. we like to do is sit beside each other and watch that tutorial and pause it and draw it, like, and yeah. compare it. And then he has on his walls, like, his own drawings of Batman or Family Guy or things like that. Yeah. Love it. You know, he's 11. He re that's probably one of the few times we can spend longer time yeah. together without, uh, like, playing a game or something. And he really enjoys it, yeah. wants to do it more and more. Uh, it's, great it's, idea. So, it's so easy since I have the the digital pad. Yeah. Yes. To scan those or you know put those up on the internet. So if a kid wants to draw it, they can just print it out. So right. That, that's the goal. Is kind of like, oh hey, how do you draw this? Well, hey, I'll give you a little link. You you and you can print it and just trace it yourself. Uh, and you know, yeah. just um, I'm trying to use everything at my disposal to make it make it. Uh, more fun and different from any of the other art channels and that's a great market to get into is stuff that will appeal to the younger audiences because there's great you know if you're planning to monetize and stuff like that that's definitely somewhere you want to be interested into and, and that will really tap into that market so i think it, 
I, I don't know if uh, um, I don't know if you saw it, but that that pad actually has the the ability to animate. No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I I didn't try it too much because it is time consuming. But um, the comic book that I was creating before I got sick, I eventually want to turn it into a, a animated comic for YouTube. Okay. So, uh, I, I saw Black Star asked about it, and so I just wanted to to you know r respond about that. So. <laughs> I, I, I'm listening because Xenia's seen it. That's why she's laughing. I had to, uh, I forgot to disable the promo video tonight. Not that oh, it hurts sorry. our thing. Yeah, anything. No, I'm saving yeah. all the questions. Don't worry, guys. Yeah. I have them all pasted here. So if you uh, miss it in the chat, because it is hard to be on both at the same time, I have it. So you, but Wait, uh, I was so just going to say something because uh, uh, it's funny. Tonight when we were on, we did a dry run. You and I got talking so much, it almost felt like the interview started. And then I looked at the watch <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I haven't set anything up. So then I ran out, and then I was trying to get everything set up, and then I realized, oh, I forgot to eat. So yeah, that, that's why all these things seem to have gotten skipped because we were having a, we were having a, we were on for what twenty minutes, I think. On the <laughs> yeah. room talking. I, I was watching the whole time, and then when uh, when I saw the the message in Twitter, I'm like, okay, and then I clicked the link, and it said you're not allowed. So I'm actually logged in under my personal email. So that's probably why you see that weird Salvador. That's yeah, no, it, it <laughs> has a conflict. It's really weird hangouts. Like if you're out, you got to be out for a bit, and that's what scares me. Sometimes I'll we'll have the window open, ready to broadcast. Yeah, close it for a minute to do something, and then it will it will open up and it will say, "Do you want it? You're about to join a channel." And it's like, no, I'm hosting it. <laughs> you know, shut it off and wait. And sometimes you literally even got to restart Windows just to get it to reset itself. It's like, oh, you're killing I, me. I, I I always hear that that uh, Skype is almost just as problematic. So I I guess just having yeah. technical difficulties is is you know the name of the game. <laughs> it is. It really is. Unfortunately, we're just we're so close to having all this amazing technology to really do something spectacular live. But it's just those last hurdles are something to get over by times, but it'll pass. Uh, so we have some questions uh, oh, here. If we can yeah. uh, get to us too, yeah. <laughs> like I've been saving them <laughs> and some comment. Um, uh, how awesome says is that? Uh, your art is amazing. Uh, how awesome is that? Says that. Uh, Resorian Buck, uh, can you ask Kateru how his Chun Li artist turned out? Uh, the Chun Li, uh, I have it about 75 percent done uh and then i was hoping this saturday to do another uh hang out and draw live stream like at one in the morning and then I'll get, i was going to finish chun li on that stream okay oh there you go <laughs> <Very> cool. tune in <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good plug and don't be shy plug anything you're doing yeah well, it's, it's, it's hard to, to with the live streams because I can't give exact times because it's it's always whenever I can get the girls asleep. <laughs> I understand completely. I understand. This has been a real shift trying to get at eight. We're still working on starting at eight, and it's uh, uh, it, it's tough because eight o'clock is usually like bath, bed, book. It and is here. <laughs> luckily, my wife was just like, you know what? I'll take the girls, and you can go downstairs and work on you know do the oh. life. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, that was very nice. But say uh, the girls uh, 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 will have to have them on sometime. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure because they were trying to knock on the door earlier, uh, and my wife's like, "No, no, leave them alone." <laughs> did, did you want? Did, did you want to introduce them? Oh, they're they should be asleep already. There like, are, oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Go. We no, should no, have it's okay. Um, the the little one is very photogenic. The oldest. Not so much, but <laughs> once again, so similar. <laughs> so similar. My God, it's like looking in the mirror. Our our both younger ones are like yeah. opposite, <laughs> complete opposite. Well, she'll she'll warm up to the stream, and then eventually she starts to get like really antsy, and then she's like, "I don't want to do this anymore," and they'll storm off. <laughs> and the little one will just try to get into the frame, and then she's trying to check for her makeup in the in the camera. <laughs> Oh my God! UP forty two hundred four says, "Do I see Lord Vader wielding an inf Infinity Gauntlet?" Yes, you do. Uh, it's actually uh, one of my friends. He's a uh, he's another comic book artist, and uh, whenever we do shows, we always trade prints with each other. Okay. And I thought I thought it'd be tacky to put my own art on the wall, so I put all my other friends' art on the wall. So uh, that one was by an artist called Rich Woodall. And uh, the Ninja Turtles right next to it are also from him. 
That's and then uh, I don't know if you can see it from here, but one of my favorite comic books is uh, Sandman. Okay. Ooh. And that's uh, Sandman over there. And then Superman right underneath it. You have uh, a collection going. Yeah, and that's just the ones that I got up on the wall. I have uh, almost a whole portfolio of other artists' prints that yeah. I've picked up from shows. Wow. <laughs> and and celebrities, celebrities will uh, sign autographs for me. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring up uh, a piece of art to them. Like, uh, uh, do you know who Ray Park is? Uh, the name is really familiar. Uh, he played uh, Darth um, Darth Maul and Snake Eyes. Uh, so no, I, know I Snake I drew, I drew, a, oh, yeah. I drew a Darth Maul and Snake Eyes for him, and he gave me this. That yeah. is so cool. <laughs> so well, I, I get stuff like that all the time, and it, it makes you feel good because well, yeah, these people I like you watch, <laughs> and now they're your fans. <laughs> that, that, well, exactly. I mean, that's what that's gonna like you were saying a while ago. That's such a, a compliment, you know. I mean, have, oh, somebody with an inspiration to you or a mentor appreciate your own work. Well, it's um uh, uh, the creator of the Ninja Turtles. Uh, when the book came out, he sent me an email, and he's just like, "Man, I was blown away by your cover." He's like, "If you ever need anything, just reach out to me." And it was just like, "Oh, that's wow!" This is a guy that you know, as a kid, you look up to, and he's kind of like, "Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I like your art." So <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That's amazing, though. <laughs> that that's that's I don't even know what to add to that, guys. <laughs> the only the only icing on the cake is if uh, the creator of Dragon Ball ever saw some of my Dragon Ball art and complimented it, I'd well, be in cloud nine. <laughs> you're still a young man. You got lots of time for that to happen. <laughs> Biker Bushcraft. I used to watch Ninja Turtles with my son when they were first out as a cartoon. Still oh, like them, and he says I still like them as an old fart. <laughs> you're not an old fart. Oh my. And we hope you're recovering. By the way, anybody who doesn't know, Biker Bushcraft had an accident on his bike, and had oh, man, I hope you feel better. Yeah, <laughs> he's a trooper. He's going to be on soon. Huh? Yep. Yep. Very so. very soon. Because <laughs> I, I, I never know. She does some of the scheduling, and I've done that once or twice where I go and say that, and she's like, mm -mm, "They cancel," you know, or <laughs> they change. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm behind the scheduling. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, you be for. <laughs> UP4204 <laughs> says, I don't think it's tacky. I've been drawing all of Iron Man's suits and putting them on my wall, like the Call of Armors in uh, Iron Man 3. Oh, that's that's awesome. I just, I, I my whole thing, and, and the same thing with the I Am, um, I am a Creator, is I, I like to boost other people. And right. I like to, you know, bring up other people. And, and so by me putting uh, other artists, you know, work on the wall, then youtube can see it and then when friends come over they're like oh that looks pretty cool i'm like well that was this artist no, and i never try to really promote myself it's more but you, you know, should have at least something of yours front and center and the other ones around it one of your like your uh pinnacle job that you want like your pinnacle work that you want you know one yeah, that that's, really that's that's usually the ninja turtle cover i have uh i have it up you well, know i don't you i would <laughs> I would be gluing it to people's faces when they walked in. <laughs> uh, oh, no, my, my friends are probably tired of hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cover Ninja Turtles. You deserve every amount, of ch every chance you can talk about it. So. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to acknowledge reviewing, uh, reviewing, playing, and more RPM. I'm so glad to see you here. God, we haven't connected in like, what, two weeks or more. Hey, what? thanks for the yeah. comment earlier, too. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, so, by my channel last night so he left a comment so it was pretty cool oh excellent no great channel that's why we were together it's one of those other ones from the i'm a creator movement and then sometimes you just kind of lose each other because of the bell once again usually right <laughs> well one one night i actually went on uh, notifications and there was at least 12 streams going on at the same time and i'm like oh man how am i support supposed to support i am a creator yeah <laughs> you know, yeah, 12 yeah. So I'll get on for maybe 10 minutes and just, you know, leave a comment. Um, and then when the video posts, then I'll leave another comment and like. So just the little things I can do, I try. <laughs> well, you do what you can. It's like bar hopping almost, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, go from, you go from the beach to somebody's uh, yep. makeup tutorial. To <laughs> yep, there's a club down the street that's playing reggae. Oh, let's run across now and catch this band for 20 minutes. <laughs> I think it's more like the mall then. 
You yeah, go, okay, yeah, that is a better way of putting it. That's right. We're going from the you go, you go to the carousel, then you go to FY, you go to the, the record store, and then the, the <laughs> <laughs> see JJ Creamy. I watch all of them. That's at, at once. That's what I do. Yeah, I try to do that sometimes too, and then bounce back and forth. But if I had a better internet provider, I would be able to do that. But if I have two streams up at the same time, everything just gets wonky because then. Yeah. You know, uh, my my wife is usually using the Wi-Fi upstairs, and the kids are probably watching something. So it, that's why live streaming at night is perfect because I get the internet all to myself. <laughs> I think that's why our son hates that we live stream at eight because I make him shut it down. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm doing it like we'll watch a movie or something. So yeah, oh, no Netflix so. yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you got to take a break because otherwise it goes crazy, especially for the uploads because they're never for the stream part. I you got to conserve every piece that you can. You had some more questions on that? Sorry, I oh, I have off. lots of questions. I don't know which one to start with. But uh, <laughs> hey, just get away. I'm, I'm an open book. <laughs> I, I have one question, uh, one of many, uh, about your drawing. Uh, where did you learn it? How did you start drawing? How did you realize uh, that you like doing it? I've been drawing since I was two. And I knew at that age that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and I even when I was thinking about maybe becoming a scientist in middle school, like that's, you know, I love science. Yeah. I was just like, well, I want to become the kind of science the scientist that draws things, <laughs> but you know, I always wanted to draw. And then uh, when I went to high school, I got accepted to uh, school of the arts here in Rochester. And from there I met a lot of teachers that kind of put me in the right direction. I even had a media teacher that taught me how to edit and wow. film. Oh, so, I've always had a, a thing for the media arts and everything. So, and, uh, you know, and then the, the turtle thing happened. So <laughs> I, and I'm still always learning. Um, I still buy oh. tutorial books. Uh, I still watch other artists on YouTube. Um, I'll even take out books out of the library. So I'm, I'm always constantly practicing and getting, trying to get better. Uh, even some of the drawings from two years ago, I try to redraw them and they always look like I've improved. That's great. That I find it's amazing. It's always good to to you know not think that you have reached your potential and just keep exploring your abilities more and more and learning throughout it. That's yeah. great that you're doing it. That's a true you know uh, uh, devotion to to the talent that you have. That's Definitely. Well, I, I always I always compare art to martial arts. Uh, I always say that when you draw stick figures, that's kind of like you're a white belt. Yeah. And as you get better, then you become a black belt. When you're a black belt, then you have to keep training to become a master. And, uh, you know, in karate, they have a saying that you don't start learning karate until you become a black belt. Mm. Right. <laughs> that is such a great analogy. <laughs> Man, you're great with these things. Hey, he's coming up with them tonight, yeah, the liners and everything like that. <laughs> Yeah, people were commenting too that they love watching you draw, and it's just so amazing uh, to watch an artist create. And and then that's uh, yep. I remember when we were doing uh, the video for Allison. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, that Painting. was something that we got uh, in the comments too. That it's so interesting to see kind of like a backstage part of an artist drawing or or painting or creating something because usually we only see the end result. Uh, you know, and, and we kind of don't really enjoy or we don't uh, artists don't let us see really how they create it. So uh, the way you're streaming your creation part of it, I think it's amazing. And people yep. like I see all through people were commenting about how they're enjoying that a lot. I know well, the little side story about that. People, there's a video. It's uh, Allison's. Uh, I forget what I named it now. The one with the painting video. It's one of the last yeah, ones Allison I did. Rums. And she had a contest last year because it was Canada's 150th birthday. And she came up with this idea to put out in Facebook for people to send in their best photos of each of the pro uh, of one of the provinces. And in the end, she selected one picture for each province and territory. She painted them all and she's selling them and half the proceeds go to the choice of the winner's charity. And, and, and Xenia got selected for Quebec. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so we got to go to with her while she was painting, and we got to uh, to uh, film her while she was painting, and Xenia take doing the photography. So we got to see her picture being painted in front of us. So it was very cool. Yeah, I I, I saw everywhere last year just uh, one fifty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wow. it was being pushed. I did. There's a video of mine too, a short one. This the Via Rail trains that they did for the 150 years. 
I did a video oh, on them. <laughs> yeah, they really, they, and that's because it's kind of un-Canadian in a way because we're always kind of like, you're not supposed to say anything good. Like, you know, not anything bad, excuse me, but like, uh, you're not supposed to talk about yourself with any kind of pride or you look like you're banging your chest. Yeah. It was like a kid. They, they might think to, you're American. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was no, that, I trust me, that. my Canadian, my Canadian friends always make fun of me because they're like, "You're, you're, you're pretty much a Canadian." Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Black Star EDM. I was laughing that I wanted to Mart uh, become the artistic Bill Nye. <laughs> <laughs> that that would that would have been awesome. I I, yeah. I I'd wear a lab coat any day. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, that's right. The other night when you we were doing it, I said about becoming, um, oh, uh, what's his name? The, the famous painter, Bob. Uh, Bob Ross. I need Bob a nap. Ross, I said, and yeah. now, I said, uh, now we're gonna just <laughs> add these little devil wings, but that'll be our little secret. You know? Yeah. No, the 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 one thing I had an idea for too is eventually, like I told you, I wanted to draw stuff for kids. Is I was gonna create a character um, where I come on camera, but not as myself. Oh, and, and I already have an idea for the name and everything. So oh, when, cool. when the time is time is ready, I'll, I'll do that. It's just with, you know, I have like a list of videos that I want to get, you know, put out there. So I might even do like a little uh, uh, parody of Bob Ross. Uh, I'll find like a hollow, uh, Halloween clown afro oh. and uh, <laughs> just kind of color. <laughs> did, did you know that he was in the military service? Yeah, and he was tired of yelling at people, so yeah. that's why kind of he's so soft. Yeah, he's and, known as a ball breaker and stuff. He's the original ASMR. Yes, you you play that on on uh, on on TV, and you just your your eyes start drooping. You're like, oh my god, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I, my mom used to tell me she's just like when you used to watch PBS, and he, he'd come on, I, my pictures would be half drawn. Because you'd, I'd fall asleep at the couch. <laughs> well, he was. He's like a walking lullaby. Like, you know. <laughs> uh, the uh, Black Star EDM brought up uh, my manga. I, I didn't know he knew about it. I, I knew I brought it up in the stream, but it's Black so hard to tell who's fan, still on the stream. Said, a big fan. He knows everything about you, he said. <laughs> well, I, 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 have, I have the portfolio here. This is the actual book. It's um, It's completely finished, but my plan is to put it on YouTube. Oh, uh, cool. Let me see if I can find like one, one piece that I really love. Oh, with all, uh, you know. walk us through it. <laughs> well, this, this is, this is one of the bad guys in the book. Uh, and I, I close up to kind of get wow. every little bit on his face. Look at the freaking Oh my God. You, you, <laughs> your work is so amazing. It's, it's hard though when you do a book cause you have to be your own editor. You have to, you have to draw every little thing and, um, see, there's a lot of just, uh, uh, little, uh, scenes here and I don't know if you can see it well there. Yeah. Uh, crap. It's so awkward to hold. It's, uh, let me see if I can find another one that's really detailed. Is it something that you eventually would like to uh, get animated as well? Um, I would love to have an animated movie, but, uh, I actually want to make it like a live action movie. And the, the plan was, you know, to find friends at the, at, at my daughter's karate studio and other friends that are martial artists. And we'd make the video at the dojo uh, because you don't need a lot of special effects. You know, it's just, it's going to be mostly martial arts. So that's a very <laughs> smart idea. That's, that's I mean, I using your local resources. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy is <laughs> Because I went to school of the arts, I have a lot of friends that are also now music producers or they're, uh, they're, they are they know dancers and stuff like that. And I don't know if I need a dancer for the movie, but it they, doesn't hurt to know one in case. Right. <laughs> As a side note, Philip said here, you sound like a Canadian. So I spend too much time up there. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'll walk into a store here in Rochester and I'm like, do you know where the washroom is? And they're like, what's a washroom? <laughs> I, I'm, oh, I'm sorry where's the bathroom <laughs> oh, so good that is so rich oh, oh my I love god it. Yeah. And, and i'm always constantly thinking 
because I'm looking at the kilometers on my speedometer instead of <laughs> the miles per hour. So I'm like, holy crap, I'm going 100. Oh, wait, I'm in. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> this is too funny. Oh, my God. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah so is this one of your uh, doodles by Doug? Oh, no. I, I, I Maybe. Uh, I did add a lot of people. Uh, Hi, doodles by Doug. Yes, welcome. <laughs> so glad to have you. Uh, uh, Blackstar has another question. We should have had you on uh, as a side uh, guest for questions, yep. uh, since you're such a big fan. Would, with special effect based films, what do you think makes a live action anime film fail? I think it's got to do with the character and plot development and bad uh, effects. What do you think? Well, t to me, because I like indie films, um, I don't feel like you need a lot of special effects to get a good story across. And uh, a good example is uh, there was a Street Fighter animated or a Street Fighter live action YouTube series, and okay. they a lot of special effects, but they got the story across and the martial arts choreographing was top notch. Probably the best I've ever seen in a movie. And the, you know you don't need special effects to move a, a plot along. So if you if you find little shortcuts it, it, and it comes out great, um, what I think kills. Um, movies is big studio intervention uh they always got to have you know their their say on things and it changes the end story and like black star said dragon ball evolution is a perfect example uh i think fox was the one that that got the rights to that and just they kept making everything wrong mm -hmm. and it's not even like oh this was bad it was just wrong and it, I honestly think if you get a fan behind a, a anime to do yeah. the movie, it's going to come out ten times better. Well, definitely, because the passion. Same as music, you know. I, that's why I'm. I like covers and I hate covers at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I admire what somebody's take on a song is, and don't get me wrong, but there's something about a time and a place when something is captured. Right. You got to watch how you mess with that because you're 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 taking the feel out of it. And okay, oh. yeah, you got you know more digitalized. It's more clear. It's more this. Even like I really a lot of times don't like remastered versions of songs much, even from the same band. Yeah, it, it, it kind of ruins it. But then you have a good example is I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Eric Pritz. No. Nope. Well, he's a he's like an EDM uh, artist. Mm. But he took uh, another brick in the wall. Okay. From Pink Floyd, and it feels like a completely different song. But it sounds like another brick in the wall. So that's it's cool. uh, yes. To me, that's when a cover or a remake is good because yep. you're turning something that everyone appreciates and making it new. Definitely, and like EDM, like in there, that, that's a great example of some of the song, the music is done there. Keeping the feel of it is the key. That's what I was saying. Like it's not. I I know I sounded like I was kind of dumping on digital. It's not what I meant. What I meant was is doing it without any integrity to the song. Yeah. Right. You know, you know yeah, what I mean? Or, or, or no soul behind it either. Yeah, <laughs> it's like taking the Mona Lisa today and, and doing her like in Photoshop, you know, and smoothing all the edges and making it perfectly right. Like, and then it, there's no more feel to it. Then it's just a digital piece. But somebody can really bring it out again if they work with the same integrity that was first used to create it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if uh, if you heard uh, in the recent, uh, I think it's an Alfa Romeo commercial, they did a Wicked Game, but they, they remade it. And it, I feel like it's a completely better song now. Yep, it sounds like a like an opera singer. <laughs> oh, definitely. It, it, I see Biker Bushcraft says here uh, that is why movies shot on film are making a comeback, and Tarantino is still at the top of his game. Definitely. Look at vinyl sales are coming back again. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, these uh, have shot up recently yep. at the local record store here. Because and it's we, because CD sound quality is, you, you can't beat it. <laughs> and like you said about, um, you brought up a really good point about the big major motion picture companies getting too involved and honestly, for lack of a term, pouring out an otherwise good film. Me? Yeah. <laughs> well, I use this, I use this in contextual themes, so I'm allowed to get with that way this one because it's the only term that really fits to it. And yeah, well, this, Disney's a good example. Yeah. Uh, they, they bought Marvel, they bought um, Star Wars, and now if you look at those two entities on film, they're nothing like 
their source material. No, yeah. talk with Star Wars especially. It's yeah, and, and it makes sense because they want to make it marketable to everyone. Yeah. Right. Star Wars has always been just the geek nerd thing and yes. now everyone. <laughs> exactly. Which, you know, but you know, that makes them billions of dollars, so they're not gonna change it. So is that's I think that's why fan fiction is so big too, because people could kinda put their own little spice on things. Well, they're purist into it. I mean, uh, that's what happens. Look at music. Music's great, and you love that rock song until your father starts listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> then it's not pop music anymore, but the company is still making huge dollars. They don't care who's listening. It just means more people. Yeah, but and, and purist, I, that's what's, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with the, the new generation liking Star Wars and liking Marvel yeah. now because uh, eventually that's going to get more people to read the comics. Of course. Um, but it's just when when I saw Disney doing that, I was just like, that's pretty much, you know, studio intervention. Yep. And, you know, I always said that if I did get the opportunity to make my comic into a movie, I'd want to have complete control over, over it. And that's why I'd probably, you know, make, you know, fund it myself and find uh, actors myself and, you know, make it on my own, you know. Yeah. Without a studio telling me, no, we own your story, so we're going to change everything about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First thing is they make it family, like as, as they cut down all the rawness out of it to make it as appealing to everybody. There's a big influence on making sure nobody's offended, nobody's uh, you're mortified. You know, it becomes in the same bubble. And I believe there'll always be a place for big motion picture, but we thought that for television. And look how things have changed in the last couple of years. Look at award shows. Most, like a lot of the awards are starting to go to in the, uh, television shows made by Netflix. Netflix. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Amazon and stuff like that. And that's the beginning. Yes, there's still big companies. You need big money right now to make TV shows. But that's changing drastically. More and more people are watching most of what they see on YouTube. Right. Movies, and, and, aren't, movies aren't immune from this either. Well, and, and those big, big, big budget movies are hurting the like medium sized budget movies. Yes, because they're thrown under the bus with the same mess. Yeah, it's you know you, you're going out to the movies on a Friday with your family. What are you going to watch? The one that's marketed to everyone, or the exactly. indie film that's kind of marketed to, you know, hey, that guy that likes indie movies. <laughs> you know? It's a hundred percent. I you couldn't agree with you more on that. You make that's a very good point. And well, also, I, too, I feel like oh. the future now, uh, because comics have dipped a lot, um, yeah. and, and animation isn't the same. Like if you watch uh, animation on TV, it's very. It almost looks like a flash animation. Yeah. Yes. Like there's almost like there's no work put into it. Yeah. And so I feel like the future is going to be is these indie animators on YouTube are now going to be the new place where people get their That's right. their animation fix. And, and we owe we owe two things we owe two things to that. One is the availability of bandwidth has grown a lot bigger. Yeah. Which has also allowed for longer videos on YouTube. And that's made all the difference in the world. That's why now they can compete. Like you take uh hot ones. Yeah. Sean, you know, show. you know what they eat the hot wings in interview? Sean yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like, that is genius. That's something <laughs> that you know, I'm sure every network is kicking their ass right now that they never thought of that. What a brilliant idea. And it is becoming, there's an example of a new modern television show, but web-based. And now with even longer time that you can upload on YouTube, movies will start to feel that pinch as well because they'll be able to put up better length movies that's accessible to everybody. And they're their own boss. They don't have to worry about a big network telling them what to do. Which means we'll keep the feeling. There's right. quite a discussion on on the chat here too. Uh, Blackstar EDM says I prefer 2000s uh, animation in year 2000 over the current animation style. Uh, on which Biker Bushcraft uh, replies, animation died in the 80s, and Blackstar completely <laughs> agrees with that. Uh, on Doodles by by the Dog. I hope Daisy Duke doesn't. Come yeah, uh, well, watch the animation on YouTube almost exclusively now. So uh, interesting, uh, quite a different uh, extremes uh, of the thoughts about that. Well, it's like what what people said in the '90s that comic books died, and then they had a resurgence, and then I feel like the bubble's coming back. But you know, 
as long as people keep telling stories, either animated on film or in a comic book, I don't think they'll ever completely go away because it, it's it's ingrained in us all the way from Greek Greek mythology, uh, you know, Norse mythology. It's everything's there. People want to see these stories, but everyone's take on it. You know, right. it's like Superman is pretty much our version of Hercules. And yes, we grew up in school reading about Hercules. And so we can see the similarities. And to me, when I see something similar, I have more fun with it. So, <laughs> Oh, definitely. And I agree to what Blackstar was saying that animation just became more efficient. Uh, because Biker Bushcraft's uncle uh, was an animator for Sesame Street for 30 years, drawing a frame wow. at a time. And I think I, in, in that way, uh, for example, I, I grew up with the cartoons uh, that were stop motion, uh, which even takes even longer time uh, than frame by frame drawing. But I, I think that what uh, digital world, so to say, enabled us, the same as with photography, for example, for me, is doing more because it... it uh, Yes, it's different, but it uh, makes it longer to do things, right? It takes you more time. So it, it also kind of, uh, your creativity squishes in a way as well. By having all these digital ways of doing it, an internet and pad, you know, and things like that, I think it opens up uh, creativity for lots more people in, in a lot bigger ways. What do you think about it? Oh, absolutely, because uh, you told me 10 years ago that I can plug my tablet to my computer and draw for people on the internet, I'd look at you like you're a nut job. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that I can just get on the computer after, you know, being home doing chores, just sit here and share the art with everybody. It, it's an amazing feeling. And it feels like I, I have the world at my fingertips because uh, I have all these ideas now. Like, I'm like, I want to do like a live stream where I tell a story, but I draw it as I'm telling the story. Oh, all these that's stories, very interesting. Yeah. And I'll let the chat kind of dictate where the story goes. And I feel like as long as you get people involved, the sky's the limit. <laughs> oh, wow. I actually, I really like that idea. I think it uh, would really work great with the live stream. You know, it's so, sounds so interactive and, enticing you know like make uh, make your own story kind of thing and you draw the animation for it that's a you you are full of amazing ideas <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard because i'm i'm really just one one person so um sometimes i don't put anything up for a couple days because i'm just editing uh clips that i've recorded uh so the live stream allows me to get on as many days as i can and just keep you know keep talking and keep making content so mm -hmm. th doing the live animation, the other, the other idea was the motion comic. So kind of drawing the frames in a comic book, but have them move slightly. So it lo looks like an animation, but oh, then wow. I, I'm, I'm narrating the voice too, because when I draw, I'm, I'm, I have the character's voice in my head because I love doing voice impersonations. Oh, so when I do like an evil monster or an evil villain, I always have like, and now he's going to take over the world. And I, you know, oh I have God. that. <laughs> oh, that's that's amazing. amazing. And then, you know, it's a little kid. It's like, hey, leave me alone. You know, and it's all those things are going through my head when I'm drawing. So I, I, I have, I have so much fun, and having a motion comic where I'm voicing instead of the word balloons, I feel like it would be really fun for people. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, and I have here people agreeing. What an excellent idea! Yep. Engagement is a key to success. Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, amazing. You are you're a guy of many talents. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love, love your voices. <laughs> uh, well, my, yeah. my, my daughters love my uh, my Yoda voice, but I haven't been able to do it the way they remember. So <laughs> but I always thought of it like a good good uh, uh, like a hermit character because that's what Yoda is. So, uh, you know, just it you just gotta have fun and and that's what i i love when people chat on my live streams because i feel like they're getting it <laughs> it's not like the speed drawings the speed drawings i play the music and it's speeding through the drawing they're not getting to see me make you know making my little comments or and and goofing around when i draw um in some of the videos you can kind of see my hands moving around 
because I'm, you know, I'm either talking to my daughter or I'm saying something really dumb. And <laughs> I have fun with it. <laughs> um, yeah, hand to hand combat scene. <laughs> very specific. Uh, uh, that's that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a movie called The Raid. No. no. It's a movie from Singapore. No, no. No? It's, it's from the beginning to end, it's all action. And that movie has some of the best hand-to-hand combat I've ever seen. <laughs> Raid. Okay. How Raid, long ago was it yeah. made? Uh, 2012, I think. Okay. Have to check it out. Because I, I I've done that before. Somebody tells me that, and I go and look, and there's like 17 different movies with the same name. So that's why well, I wanted to ask you about the time frame. I'm going to look it up. The title though. on it is called The Raid Redemption. I, okay. It, but uh, the 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 movie sh- should be easy to find. No, no, I'll definitely check it out because that sounds. Just uh, no kids. The kids can't watch it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh <my> no. God. <laughs> but I would love it though. Very very violent. <laughs> It sounds very interesting. I'd like to check it out. Uh, Blackstar also asked, what is your uh, favorite animation, like with regards to the TV show or a movie? Um, well, Dragon Ball Z is up there um, because uh, just the ideas in Dragon Ball Z have kind of uh, have stuck with me my whole life. I even got one of the characters tattooed on my arm. I was going to ask you about your tattoo, so there's a great <laughs> way to segue into that. Yeah. He's a he's my favorite character because he he's always coming in second, and I've always felt my whole life that I've always come in second, and but I always keep pushing to try to be first, so I always related with that, and so that that's why he's one of my favorite characters. His name is Vegeta. <laughs> oh my, that is so good. <laughs> Sorry, I got caught. Bushcraft gave me an interesting thing. He said, "Our dog just treed three raccoons, so gotta go." And I know you people <laughs> oh, no. said something completely uh, <laughs> unspellable. So I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> oh, nanny, N A N I. How may well most? What is it? Some kind of slang that is in an animation or something? I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, are are you speaking the backwards dragon language? But no. <clears throat> oh my god! Doesn't make sense in reverse either. <laughs> god, god, I can't be much help on this one. I think. <laughs> I... Well, in the new Dragon Ball series, when you want to make a wish to a dragon, you have to say it backwards. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought that's maybe that that's what he was referring to. Probably but... yes. There you go. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> I didn't realize there was rules like that. So see, I'm learning now. Oh yeah, in in one of the versions, you have to speak in an alien language in order to make a wish. So it, that shows all it's it's out there. But if right. I could transport my body into any cartoon, it would be Dragon Ball. <laughs> so cool. Perfect. It's at uh, UP. <clears throat> see, we're learning new things even about because like UP forty two hundred four is for Union Pacific. We first met because of my train videos. Oh really. And I abs- this is what I love about this channel. This is what I wanted for it from the beginning when we decided to try to do it. We didn't really have a plan set out because we just kind of got in with both feet. But I wanted it. We're all watching each other's videos. We kind of, a lot of us met and I'm creator and stuff. And yeah. that has been great for getting to find new people and job. But this, I wanted to take a step further and now get to kind of know each other better. So we're supporting each other, you know three, four, five years down the road by getting to know backstories and stuff like that about the people who make what they do. Yeah, absolutely. And and it, through the I Am A Creator, I found so many channels that, like, now I can't get enough of. Like, right. I, I just see Crazy Russian official. Yes. His channel, I swear, I watched, I binge watched almost all his videos. Like, Yeah, <laughs> we're kind of guilty of that one too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I love, I love science. And, and it, it's like a fun way to do science. And, and so, and then his accent is the best. I love it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, welcome, James. Uh, there was a question uh, from DJ Kizzy. Um, have you seen the movie Dragon Ball? Oh, sorry, where did it go? Dragon Ball... Uh, the magic begins. It's a live action. Oh, and as a side note, guys, I keep forgetting to say, oh, please gosh. apologize for the lighting tonight. I'm the one who did it in a rush. So, <laughs> yes, we kind of look ghosted out some. <laughs> That's. <Wow. laughs> 
Well, at least if I did this, it would look it would I would look like a shadow. See? <laughs> um, well, it's better than it's better than us looking like we have no souls. So. That's what happens when I'm well, <laughs> well, Sometimes when, when I edit, when I edit, I try to turn all the drawing lights off because it gets so hot. And and then my wife will come in here. She's like, "You look like the Phantom of the Opera." Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I'm just on the keyboard, and I'm just like editing. Uh, must draw turtles. <laughs> <laughs> One night, I thought I was gonna fall asleep at the computer because I was up all night. Because I, I I did a live stream. I was uploading a video at the same time I was uploading the video. I was I think I was gaming. So it was like. Everything at once, and I, I'm surprised my brain didn't just shut off. <laughs> As somebody I think was only on Buck was per was proposing the live streams where we all fall asleep, like the yeah. host and the chatters all fall asleep and then wake up, you know, on live stream back yeah. again. <laughs> I've done that before, where I, I leave a live stream on on the PlayStation, and I didn't realize I left it on, and then it'll just keep like looping it because I have it on repeat video. Oh no. <laughs> I woke up. I woke up, and I'm like, "Am I dreaming?" Because I swear I just watched this last night, and it's the same video. <laughs> I got, I got a little spider on me. They're everywhere. <laughs> Too cold here for that. Still. <laughs> well, this this room, uh, there there's a, a lot of spiders, which I don't mind because they get rid of all the regular bugs. But they they sometimes come and drop down while I'm drawing, and they completely freak me out. Oh my god! <laughs> One day I'm drawing, and then this huge spider's like right, like staring at me. I'm like, oh, okay, time to go get a drink. <laughs> Question about the drawing: Do your daughters ask you to draw princesses and things like are are complete opposite of what you yeah. used to draw? No, point. they're they're actually um, they like wrestling, they like karate, um, they like Star Wars. Oh. They, so they take wow. after they got their dad. What so no princesses then, no frozen. <laughs> they like princess. They, they like princess things, but um, they they tend to gravitate to whatever I like. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's cool. You know, they're, they're daddy's little girls. So and what about the what about your wife? Is she into it as well? Um, like, yeah, my wife. Type of she she's um she's more into like uh like uh, NCIS and you mm. know detective shows and stuff but she she really likes wrestling too so that's the one thing that we all enjoy because wrestling is like live action comic books so you, you can't go wrong it's you just know, it's fun really true. My God, I, can't I know but I you know. have like 12 quotes we could do like you know when they like show like they, <laughs> the guests they featured we literally got like 12 great cuts we could put tonight. i think your merchandise would be really yeah. great like you know like i love <laughs> with that or, or a shirt yep. with those liners on so no. <laughs> <laughs> well I just I, I always have these analogies in my head and I always find similarities in things so uh, I feel like you know sometimes I'm a, like a walking Yoda you know just just coming up with weird things <laughs> that's so cool you got a great outlook towards it I you know you can see it's it's it, it, you enjoy like it's like not just a passion of what you're doing, but um, it's life. <laughs> yeah, it's a lifestyle. That's exactly it. Uh, I did some jobs in my life, like I was a truck driver years ago, long haul, and I grew up around fishermen and and the forestry and farming guys. And you know, you realize there's some things in life that you do as a job from nine to five, and there's other thing that's a lifestyle. Right. And I believe that's the same with whatever you're really passionate about. If you tie it into your life, whether it's dancing, singing, drawing, uh, whatever the talent is, you get the best work out of people who really breathe it almost like in their day to day lives. Well, I always, I always told myself when, when I was younger is I was always going to be myself and I didn't care what anybody thought about it. So even now I'm 32, I still wear, anime shirts i still wear you know star wars shirts mm. uh, i just i just try to be the personification of what i make so uh i'm just a, a walking comic book character and <laughs> if people well, ask me what's your job i'm like i draw comic books <laughs> do you have any more tattoos besides the one in your arm uh i have the vegeta then up here i have uh uh just a chinese symbol for uh forever Okay, the one of my characters lives forever, so I thought it was kind of fitting to have the 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 symbol there. I have a tiger up here, and then right here I have a panchette 
uh, because I'm a huge Castlevania fan. Okay. And (laughs) there's uh, Ouija boards everywhere. So the the tattoo artist, like, you sure you want to get a Ouija board? Some people think they're kind of bad luck. I was like, I believe I make my own luck, you know. Oh, that's uh, holy Love God, it. we're just ding, 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 ding. We're gonna put a little <laughs> counter up there. Yeah, <laughs> I think you planned all these. I think you got them on cue cards or something. <laughs> you pull them out. <laughs> oh my God, the Susie Channel was a work for Marvel Comics years ago. She was a color artist. Wow. Yeah, the, the, the colorists don't get enough uh, enough uh, praise because. A half the time on the comics, they don't even get a mention. Yes. So then they don't get the residuals from the comics when they sell. Oh. They get paid just for the coloring, but they don't get you know residuals as the comic gets popular and popular. So. And I mean, they help bring it to life. I mean, you know, it's the color that speaks to people. You know, I mean, the drawings are great, but the color works hand in hand with it as well. Yeah, that's so, so amazing. Though. Well, the, Thank you. The thing is with with uh, comics, especially. Um, because I, I started off as an inker um, for a smaller indie comic. Okay. You don't see the book come alive until you see the, the color. Because uh, before then, it looks like a flat image. Like in some of my videos, you see it's just black and white. But then once I start putting colors, when it starts to almost look like it's lifting off the paper. And, you know, you know life's in color. So... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. It's, it's uh, you're a hundred percent right. I mean, that's what makes people help connect with what they see. Yeah, and and you know, I love black and white um, drawing. Mm-hmm. But it's not until I add a little bit of gray in the areas that make the black and white pop out. It's almost like uh, you remember the Take on Me video from Aha. Yes, yeah, yes, of course. Yeah, classic. It, it looked like it was coming out because they would put these gray tones in that drawing, and it. It was always such a. I love that video. <laughs> you literally took my one liner. You got all these ones tonight. And that's where I was going to go with it. You literally nailed exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Even with black and white, those shades of gray make all the difference in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, I, there was one comic uh, that another artist gave me at a show, and it was all black and white, uh, no gray tones. And I said, Do you mind if I take this back to the hotel? Um, and maybe put some gray tones on it. And he's like, yeah, sure. The next day he was like, holy crap, it looks like a completely different book. And I was like, I, I just wanted to test it out. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and you know, we, we started collaborating after that. I actually, uh, uh, this is, uh, this is one of the books that we did. Oh man. I, I only did the cover on this one. He he does everything else, but only. <laughs> yeah. You are so I, I I know I know. You're so <laughs> humble. You're supporting all the other artists. You don't have your art on your walls, and you say you're only created a cover. It's <laughs> <you're> amazing. <laughs> well, I I have always been taught, you know, to always be humble, and uh, oh. my my family from Puerto Rico, they're all farmers, so I think I think that's where I get it from. <laughs> that helps. That helps you blend in with Canadians. <laughs> Yeah, got the farmer tan already. <laughs> you have to move here. It's like oh, yeah. well, only an hour away. Yeah, you exactly. Just... Yep, we're going to well, get you over that one. One of my plans was uh, there's an animation studio in Toronto, and yeah. if I got the job, I was going to stay up there a couple months and then apply for dual citizenship. Oh. But, uh, I never got the call back from them. And uh, I think they actually went um, defunct, actually. Um, they made the, um, oh man, uh, tune, uh, what's the channel in Canada? Uh, it's like, a oh, cartoon. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Teletoon. Teletoon. Yes. And so they're the animation studio for Teletoon. Now they farm out to Vancouver. So oh. their Toronto studio went kaput. That but, was the one that did uh, Johnny Bravo and all them. Right. Cause they used to farm out to other, other big companies and I just never got it. Uh, that was yeah. That would have been a great way to do it. <laughs> I always loved. I always think because my oldest son, twenty at twenty, I remember him when he was younger watching Johnny Bravo. I, I want to watch him comb my hair real fast, you know. Yeah, those those, those cartoons were always a blast because even uh, though they were, they, they seem so raggedly drawn. Yeah, it was the voice acting and uh, just the comedy in it was hilarious. So. Well, one time Canada did well because I mean we never until recently had any TV shows that ever made it. 
big. If somebody did well here, the first place they were gone to was across the 49th parallel. I mean, that was just a a, a bomb. Uh, Mike, uh, what's, what's his name? McDonald. Uh, we watch him. Norm, Norm, Mac McDonald, Norm McDonald. Yeah. Do you know Norm McDonald? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I love all the SNL alums. <laughs> and, and him, like, you know, he brought up one time because somebody said, why are Canadians so funny? And it's because, like he said at the time, nobody had any aspiring dreams. If you did stand up in common in Canada, that's as far as it went. Wherever you were was pretty much at the pinnacle of it. Where he said when he got to the states, you know, when he got to meet Jerry Seinfeld, all these guys, all they were doing was kind of using comedy as a stepping stone to get a sitcom. Right. So yeah. you know they weren't polishing their craft as much. And also, a side note about Canadians, I don't think a lot of people realize is I always said we're the bridge between Europe. We're we always kind of do less of one like whatever you take in any scenario we either do more of it or less than europe and north and america and it's just kind of that way we are we're kind of an entrance so if you have uh more like the europe has more time off than the states and canada has in the middle of them so like you know the average is two weeks and at six weeks there we're like four you know we're always kind of in that middle one leg in each place and i think that's also why uh you know when you go over to canada you kind of see everyone just slightly happier and whereas here you know we're just we work ourselves to death you know to pay for a car that we don't own and a house we can't live in <laughs> for the rest of our lives so yeah no. I, I always admired uh, and um since i came here the optimism that canadians have and the best example of that was a couple of years ago when um around calgary they had um big uh, floods, floods yeah. you know it was coming month month how it's squalls yeah yeah uh and um the news uh were interviewing a woman who just lost her house like it literally was swept away on live right oh and wow they, uh, they are asking her well you know how, how are you doing like you know her reaction basically as it was happening and she's like, well, at least I'm alive. Well, house is just a house. I hope my neighbors are, I okay. My neighbors are okay. And I was so stunned. It's not like she was in a shock, you know? Yeah. And yes, it's upsetting, but she still managed to find something positive. She just lost everything. But she still managed to find a positive note to it. And and I think it, it so shows through everything in Canada in general. I and no offense to states, but I really think by living here and like watching what is going on in states and living here and, and, and being from Europe, I really think that Canada is American dream. Like when people say, Well, I want to go overseas to live American dream, I really <laughs> think it happens in Canada. Yeah, well the yeah. thing here it, the, the thing here is uh, you know, like I said, we work really hard and you you can get really caught up with I got to make X amount of money to be comfortable. But mm -hmm. I always said, you know, as long as I have my family and my health, you know, and, and a pencil and paper to draw on, yeah. I'm happy, happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we worry about the little things day to day, but when something like that happens, you really learn, and that's as cliche as can be, but you do learn how to appreciate the little things in life. Absolutely. Especially I had a couple of friends uh, when Hurricane Sandy uh, hit New yeah. Jersey. Some of them lost all their comic books. Um, they, they lost all their video games and stuff. And now their outlook is, you know, I don't need material things because uh, I I lived through it. And you know, uh, I I think that's the mindset that a lot of people should have. You know, yeah. what if the internet went away tomorrow? What if video games and and material things went away? You'd have to appreciate you know your your health and and family so it is very important and it is. i think i think that's why sometimes i know i have to draw but if my kids are saying hey daddy i want to do this i'll set it aside and go do it so uh i think that's more more important down the long run because then they're gonna be like, i remember dad would want to play with us and stuff like that yeah <laughs> when i'm old in a retirement home down the road <laughs> I'm gonna be the only old guy in the in the retirement home playing Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm sure your daughters they just enjoy spending time with you. You must be mm. such a cool dad. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking that they must be like all the other kids like to come over and like you know, 
Well, the, the, younger than her dad's. <laughs> the oldest one is kind of embarrassed of me because whenever I go to the school, I have like, you know, a Superman shirt on and they're like, dad, don't say anything. <laughs> Cause they know I'm going to say something goofy or corny. And I was like, I don't care. Your friends like me. So what? <laughs> That's the way it is with my oldest son was like that when he was a bit younger. And I remember that. So I laid on thick with him and all, oh, you want to sit with dad, come sit with dad and we're going to talk, you know, and their his friends are like roaring. I know what's getting them going. <laughs> I tried to do it enough to like completely get on his nerves, but enough just to kind of bug him here and there with it. Well, I don't, I don't try to bug her, but it's just, uh, you know, it just she she feels uncomfortable because you know she she's not getting the attention anymore. <laughs> uh, oh my god! <laughs> oh, you got to keep my, it fun my, with them. My wife, my wife likes sending me to all those functions because she's like, I don't deal well with a big groups of people, but they seem to all want to gravitate towards you at these events. And, I, can, I can see why. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got the character for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's just a lot of parents. So they'll go to these events and they just stand by the wall and they don't talk to anyone. And I'm there, like, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And, yeah. Because you know, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a, a stuffy parent at these things. I I want to be the kids playing. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> That's a great attitude. Uh, Blackstar is saying, remember when it was uncool to like video game uh, comics and anime? Yep. Now it oh, seems yeah. like everyone is into it now. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I, I used to get picked on in school all the time. They're like, oh, you're, you're reading that? Or, yeah. And the, 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 best, the best one was uh, there was a, a, a girl in, in uh, middle school or high school, and she used to always be like, oh, he's, such, he's so corny and stuff like that. And one of the shows locally, she comes up to the table with her kids. <laughs> she's like, "Hey, I remember you." And and she, oh yeah, and she's all into it now. <laughs> That's so amazing. I was like, oh, oh, "Sweet revenge!" <laughs> That's right. Well, today it is the end thing. It oh yeah, is, you know. And, and, and eventually, uh, you know, five six years from now, everything from the two thousands will be the new in thing. Yep. <laughs> That's just the cycle. Because hey, in the 90s and the late 2000s, everything from the 80s or from the 70s was huge. Yep. And <laughs> it, it, everything has to go a circle like that, and it's always got to come back for its renaissance period. Right. Like 80s music, I loved it. That was my generational thing. But now looking back at it, once it, you know, it was gone and I was older and looking back, it's like, well, thank God it did because it came god awful, and that's what happens <laughs> with big business because everybody jumps in the bandwagon. It gets worse right. and worse and worse, and every band at the time who said, you know, uh, they were a pop band, no, you're going to be a hard rock band. So you got six months to grow your hair out and learn three chords on a guitar. You know, well, and it's then, uh, it's like you can't listen to new wave for too long because yeah. You're like, I feel like I'm listening to the same song for 12 hours. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I was going to bring out that example. You can do it in any genre. And, and the 80s was a great example. Was well, Bon Jovi. And I'm, I was, well, Bon Jovi actually set a trend, but they get labeled for the trend, even though they're the ones who kind of set it. They're paying the price for the ones that came after them <laughs> and ruined it. You know what I mean? Def Flower, all those guys all went through that. And it took them 15 years before they could get on any sides of a stage again. Right, it had to go through its point of being completely uncool and not want to hear it, and oh, it sucks. And somebody would listen to it in their car, but then tell their friends it sucked. And then they finally get to the point where they could come back and do it again. Same with '90s. We'll go through that. Same. Well, with it, it's a, uh, it was funny you said that because I don't know if you watch a show called Preacher. Uh, I've heard of it. Uh, yes, I have seen uh, some of it. Some of it, not all. Uh, well, there, there's a scene in the new season where they're all driving in the car, and Come on Eileen comes on. Oh, God. And they're all in the car, and they're like, man, this song sucks. Mm -hmm. And then the guy in the back's like, yeah, it sucks. But then as it keeps going, they all start singing along to it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's 80s music in a nutshell. It's like, yeah. man, this song sucks, but then it starts playing, and then you're tapping your feet, and you're like, yeah, I remember this is good. <laughs> They do that in Family Guy about the band Train when they're when they're all sitting around the the the, the, the clam. <laughs> I hate Train. Oh yeah, I heard they're coming. They suck, and then they finally admit it. Oh my god, I love Train. I love Train so much. I love well, it. it's it's like '90s rock. Uh, it, it there's some that that's not that good. <laughs> then it'll come on, and you're like, eh, I forgot how good this song was. Yeah, then, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, that's just the way it goes. Out the 
rabbit hole. <laughs> yep, we change taste, you know, and, and it gets saturated. And instead of remembering the good songs that were in that era, we kind of lumped them all together and that, well, that just all of it sucked. But then <laughs> after a bit of time, you come back. There, uh, Doodles by Doug brought up, a, I was going to talk about the, the, night, the music. Uh, we had a bunch of musicians here Monday night. We had our guitars. Uh, there was drummers and stuff like that. We talked for a couple hours. And Duran Duran is something that's very special because I worked for this big music company and I worked with a guy who took after the looked after the keyboard department. And anybody who knows guys in keyboard departments, they're really prudes because they're very <laughs> analytical. They're like the, the 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 Einsteins of the music world. You know, they tell jokes based on algorithms. So go from there. <laughs> and he brought up Duran Duran, and I he said that day, and he's like, I've said something about them, and he said. Man, he goes, do you know how great those guys are as musicians? And I'm like, well, like, I drew a blank. I'm like, I don't <laughs> hate them, but I never thought of them as, like, you know, musicians. Right. And he said something that stays with me to this day. He said, first of all, there's proof that even back in the 80s, the biggest boy band still had to know how to play something, not just <laughs> sing. And I'm like, okay, touche. Second part is you take a song like Rio, he said, go home and play it. And start playing with the same, you know, cutting off all the high end. He said, listen to the yeah. bass. That thing has a phenomenal bass track into it. It's insane. I mean, that's full on jazz. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where you, you they fall into that. Like you said, they fall into the category. So then yep. you're like, oh, that's just all manufactured crap. But yep. there's some really good stuff in there. And oh, my God. It, if you if you ever check out like one of my Spotify playlists, it's all over the place. Like, <laughs> I love that. I don't like listening to just one type of music. The only thing that might not be in there is country, but yep. <laughs> it's just because uh, it, country makes me dizzy. It's like <laughs> ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding it's just too much uh, twanginess in there. <laughs> Sorry if I don't get a lot of pity for you because I grew up with a father who vastly enjoyed bluegrass music, so. <laughs> Every Sunday morning at 6 a.m., he had these large, you know, those old time Zenith speakers. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had those the eight the track best. player, you know, the big yeah. size <laughs> turntable eight silver, tracks. Silver. Oh, my. Silver yes, silver. yes. Silver. All the lovely 70s colors coming to life. And Sunday morning, six o'clock, this is how it always began. And it was just like, will you turn it up, blow up, cut the power, <laughs> burn the house? I don't care. I hate it. How do you wake up to something like that in a good mood? And we come down over oh. the stairs, he'd be you all can't. smiling, making breakfast, you know, and it's like. You, you can't do it. <laughs> nightmares, my friend. Well, Cotton Eye Joe, uh, best friend in your third set, Cotton. <laughs> oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> that that Not song. Country. No way. I guess if it's played in a fun setting, is okay, but you can't just pop it in on 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 the radio and. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, look at the dance version of that song, you know, and then you think of that freaking frog and. <laughs> no, I. Yeah, there you go. We got 200 for Black Star EDM. Oh, we excellent. For all the great congrats for Black Star. Today. I said congrats, Star Black Star. You know. That is so cool. Congratulations. Yeah. We're going to have to bring that up and share it. We got to do a share screen. That oh, deserves awesome. it. We got you. That's amazing. Let's see We've here. been quietly trying to support and uh, I ran up to oh, there we 200. Go. Amazing. Congratulations. No hassle, no stress, just a nice support. <laughs> Love it. That's really cool. Good stuff. 201. Yep. Wow. It's already over there. Wow. Look, 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 look. look. How long have we known each other, Black Star? There's an example. And look, look once again, the bell's not rung. Oh, there it is right there, folks. Yeah. It's it, it's it's just crazy. I think uh, it just unsubscribes or unrings it yeah, that, all the time because that really yesterday burns was me the same it. thing. There's no, you know, and we've known Black Star since pretty much the beginning, I would say. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I had a guy the other week, I went to his channel and I, I remembered him after from the beginning, but I didn't. I found it somewhere, and I said, oh, you know, I, I like your channel, and I subscribed. And he flew back at me a couple hours. I looked back, and two months ago, you said you liked my work, and now you're adding me. It just shows you're in for the subs. Thanks a lot. I wish you a good life, and I'm sub me. And it's like, man, if I did this two months ago, you haven't noticed the pattern by now. This happens to everybody, like, you know, right. it unsubs us. 
And I'm just like, you know what? Pfft, I'm not chasing after you. <laughs> well, Blackstar is awesome. He's been going on all my live streams, and uh, he's, he's been liking all my videos, so it, I always appreciate it. He deserves a lot more than 200. Like, I hope to God that just takes off. Like, get in, get in the live streams and stuff like that because you definitely uh, you you deserve way more than that. Uh, he was, uh, they were laughing that we should rename this live stream, uh, you know, Otter Studio <laughs> Studios and Thousand Questions from Blackstar <laughs> It would it would have been pretty cool to have him on too. That that oh, I know, I know. I, I I know. Didn't know that he's such a big fan of yours. Yeah, exactly. Like, he knows uh, everything is like uh, pro questions and everything. So. Next That's time, cool. if somebody knows a guest so close and the big fans, just tweet to us so we know. Maybe we can get you on as well. It would be awesome. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, like a party. <laughs> I can't believe yes. in the short amount of time we've done this, how many people want to be on with us. Like, this this blows oh, my I love mind. I so much. It, it is just to get to know each other like I'm that, honored. You know? I'm honored, and I sometimes don't even understand why. It, like, not – I don't I, – I appreciate it, and it means a lot. But you know, it's all, it's always awesome uh, when you know you you actually feel like you're getting a connection with people, you know. Yeah, and I think people really leave here having a better connection. I've talked to some that's been on already, and they're saying like they're getting you know more views, and the same ones coming back more, and making more personalized comments, which means they're appreciating your work even that much more. Because we don't see when we went on. We went on, I'm a creator the first time. James was getting some fly. We went on to kind of like support him. Yeah. And he said, oh, you're going to go on and do live streams. And I'm like, never. Like we never wanted to be in front. <laughs> we never wanted to even touch being in front of a lens. We both agreed never. That was not in our cards, no interest. <laughs> but then we realized that night that so many people connected with us because, I mean, I think I'm a decent editor and people were always commenting, I love your edits, you know, my God. But nobody knew what I was. They didn't know if, because she would answer some questions, and I would. So, Xenia would be on a makeup channel saying, oh, I love the shade. That's such a pretty color for spring. And I'd be telling some guy, oh, I love the Hemi they put in this thing. So, they didn't <laughs> know if we were a man or a woman. They didn't know if we were young or old. Didn't know if I was, they didn't know if we were 10 people or one or some binary thing. Like, they, they just didn't even know what to begin to think of us. And well, that's that's that, the thing. Like, when you find these channels... And there's no real video or faces. You're like, yeah. who is behind the channel? Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, actually, see faces with it. And we built the mystique that way because we went on just before we hit a thousand. Yeah. So we were getting nailed, like we, because we only had on February second we had forty two subscribers. Yeah. And we hit a thousand, and now we're getting close to thirteen hundred. There were just that's that's awesome. It's not. It, I didn't start to see real growth until I put my face in the in front of the camera. <laughs> Well, it looks, that's the way it rockets up. So and that's why uh, my daughter actually got this for me for my birthday. She was like, "You should wear this on your streams." And oh. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> that was so it's from Dragon Ball, and it actually makes the noise. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, let me try to get. <laughs> oh yeah, we heard it. Oh, that's that was so nice of her. <laughs> yeah, well, I told her I was like, I'll wear it during my gaming streams, but I tried to do it, but there's like a holograph here. And it makes you super dizzy. Yeah, no, I can imagine, but that was nice of her though. How th that was oh. so thoughtful. Well, she was just like, "Daddy, you gotta, you gotta look funny on there because it'll get people to watch." She, she's an expert on YouTube, and so she's like, um, "I, I watch so many YouTube, and all these gamers always have funny headphones and stuff, and you should wear that." And I'm like, uh, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess I got a good good uh, review from it because I can always be like, it's over nine thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that is so cool. But I can't get over how nice that was that she got that for you for your birthday. I, I, that was that's really yeah. well. The 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 mall. We went to the mall because we had to return something, and and she saw it at one of the stores. And she goes to my wife, and she's like, I want to get dad. Uh, the scouter for his birthday. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. My God. Yeah, Susie says, Oh my God, the kids are the best. So cute. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Maybe we'll have a show. we'll get together again sometime and have the kids on for a little bit when it's earlier. Oh. Yeah, we, somebody was saying that we still have so many questions, and I have so many questions. Oh, and sorry. Blackstar has okay. thousand and one questions. So, what I think we're gonna have to have like, you like back too yeah. because there's just uh, <laughs> not. 
possible to ask everything. And I would love to come back. I had a blast. Yeah, uh, we'll have to have you back for drawing. Yeah. I would love to see you drawing more. Well, and oh my that, god, that's what I was I was saying earlier. Is yeah, I was hoping that with with OBS I would have been able to stream to you guys. Yeah, because then you'd be able to see me draw and I can talk at the same time during the stream. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do next time, definitely. Because I would love that would be so awesome. Or maybe we get him an easel and he can really do the Bob thing, you know, like up on the top. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about Canadians a while ago. Do you know the sh the TV show that was on in the '90s, Kids in the Hall? Yeah, I love that show. They do this great impression of him, and uh, it's the tall guy there, uh, McKinley. That's on. Uh, he's on the TV show Superstore in the states. Yeah, I, that's I what I told my first he got so chubby. <laughs> he doesn't. He did. Bob, and he would always. Uh, he's painting, and the, the the painting, of course, is already semi complete. And there's a guy standing there. And he always does, you know, because Bob would always leave something extra. And this one, he leaves a tumor on him. Eh? And I, it's so <laughs> funny. It's so kids in the hall. It's this big blop right at the side of his head. Now, we're not going to tell anybody with this. Just a nice little cute tumor right up in here. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Tumor. How are you today? Like that. That, that show was, was like my introduction to skit comedy. So oh. Oh, that show was oh, so far that. ahead of its time. Oh, yeah. And they, they, they literally could have done anything on this show. And you see, remember I was saying a while ago about Canada kind of being in a bridge? Yeah. It could go a little more riskier than than Canada good, than, but a lot more riskier than the States. And Canada could kind of play in that gray area more. Like it, like well, a, the so number two on, on Canadian TV that you wouldn't be able to see here. Yes, that's right. <laughs> like, you know Super Dave Osborne? No, no, I don't. Oh, you've never seen him? Oh, he's on uh, Norm Macdonald a lot. And that he used to dress up as an, uh, it was the time of Evil Knievel and all that stuff. And he would dress up as evil, like an Evil Knievel type, one of these daredevils, and he'd always get crushed and everything, beaten to death. <laughs> They'd drop shit on him like a pee. Oh, so I'm getting too comfortable now. Beep, beep, <laughs> Sorry, beep, folks. Beep, beep. <laughs> they drop drop shit. You know, like huge ships, like the Titanic. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's I beat, I beat the, uh, the AI. <laughs> You were the first person to ever get me comfortable enough that that slipped. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess hats off to you. Well, I'm just uh, a I think that's what it is. <laughs> but I remember the one time I, I, I stayed at a hotel over there and like 8 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night in one of the French channels, there's like straight up nudity. Oh, yeah. French channels are pretty liberal. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, see, this would not fly in America. No. <laughs> We're okay with radio stations stations in Montreal here, the American, like the English stations, excuse me, you can't swear. But on the French ones, they do swear, like French words, but they do, which would be kind of pretty comparable to some pretty hardcore. I mean, like not endless runs of it, but they have a lot of expressions that you could never say here. Well, I, I understand some of them because Spanish has like pretty close to the same. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean French. If you've ever gone to a Catholic church, almost every swear word in the French language is based on items found in a Catholic church. <laughs> so, it's they're they're kind of universal. They might sound a little different, but you can easily pick them out. I actually like. I find it's easier to swear in French because it rolls off the tongue better. Yeah, and then you don't have to worry about the people that don't understand it. <laughs> Exactly, said so it's easier for her to swear in English. I think it's easier to swear in the language that is not your uh, everyday tongue. I, I find it because, uh, like, my, my or or like, uh, not your mother tongue, right? Yeah. Because uh, it's English is not my first language, and I never swear in Latvian. But in, <laughs> and I don't really do it in English either. But it's kind of say you don't swear very often. Yeah, but it's still kind of easier anyway. It's it's I I think it's it goes that it's a different language. You know, it's not so personal or something. I, I most I mostly swear when I'm playing video games. So that's why streaming video games is going to be a little tough. Yeah. yeah. Beat button. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful, especially if you're live streaming. As we know ever <laughs> from people live streaming and. Uh, That's why she's. Beeps. I was trying to learn Latvian, but it's ex it's an extremely hard language to learn. So she was. I'm learning Russian. I stopped for a little while, but I want to get back in it. And that's one of my dreams is I want to be able to blow a gasket in Russian. I just think that would be like the greatest. <laughs> that's my, uh, there's my life dream. dream. Yeah. I... Some people want to cure cancer and do all these things. I just want to learn how to be able to pull off a streak in Russian because it just sounds so uh, formal. And <laughs> you're going to, you're going to sound like uh, you're, you're from, uh, from one of those World War II movies. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I do. 
and, I do. <laughs> and she's teaching me these words like and i'm also using other things to learn them and i was so frustrated because they all don't sound russian the words i'm learning and i want finally i learned pillow is padushka and i'm like that's the type of word i want I want padushkas. I want something I slam the fist on the table that has a punch to it when you say it. I'll get there. <laughs> there, I was just going to show you. That's uh, you probably then know these guys. Oh yeah, I can't believe they they don't look that old at all. No, this was back. This was the first time they got back together again after years, and was in Montreal. And uh, Scott Thompson had uh, carry uh, had to be carried by I forget his name now, so we decided to uh, change it up, and I would carry him for the photo to give him a break. So, <laughs> do you? And that's so funny that that uh, that guy's last name is Bujold. Uh, that's that's such a rare last name, and I have a friend called Evan Bujold. <laughs> oh really? Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, Evan. <laughs> No, my Andrew is Andrew Bujold. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, my friend in Syracuse is called Evan Bujold. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that could also be a family member again. <laughs> yeah. You never know. He did say he was from, uh, like, his family is from Canada. So. Yeah, it's a really old French small name. World. <laughs> yeah, it is a small world. You never know. I had no idea that was your page. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's me holding him. That's why. Uh, when I used to work for that music company, I used to go backstage to all these things all the time, and that. Oh, that's that's uh, that. Me and my cousin used to watch uh, Kids in the Hall all the time, and we thought uh, uh, McKin, Mc, I think it's McKinnon, right? Mc, or McKinley? McKinley. Yeah. I, I always thought he was he was hilarious because he always looked like Big Bird. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think he had a skit where he was Big Bird. Yes, and he was always the perfect straight man out of all of them. Like you know, like the 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 the, the business guy one or something like that. But he was so good yeah. at being that. They were really talented. Yeah, they, I, and and you catch him every now and then in different movies and shows, and you're like, yeah. they 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 deserve so much more. <laughs> oh, they they and then they've had a lot of big shows like the um, uh, freely, uh, not freely. What's his name? The the he was the little guy, Dave. Uh, he he had the show News Radio with Joe Rogan into it years ago and stuff like that and the the little one right yeah yep <laughs> and he's, he's always showing up in movies as like the weird character just like <laughs> yeah oh no not the little one that I was holding but the other guy with kind of blonder hair oh okay all right yeah he had a show called News Radio that was really big um, and then they all kind of had their turn in Hollywood. <laughs> I, I gotta catch up on all those old shows. Yeah, me too. I still watch them once in a while. Well, because Xenia came over, she hadn't seen a lot of these shows when they originally yeah. ran. So that's when we started watching them again. So we went through a lot of them that way. Oh my god, yeah, it's so hilarious. Yeah. Just love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Doodles, Doodles by Doug wants to know what tablet I use. Oh, that's oh, a great right, question. Yeah. I, uh, I, I actually have two. So the one that you see on the live streams is this one right here. And it just allows me to draw right on the computer. And then when I do more intense stuff, this is this is an actual – it's actually a whole computer. And then I just draw on this. This one's called the Cintiq. And uh, it, sucks for, it sucks for live streaming because the camera is, like, aimed right up my nose. Oh, I'm just going to start for a sec. Black Star is taking off and saying goodbye. And since Black Star was so tonight, I wanted to make sure that you knew he was leaving to say your. Oh, well, Black Star, thank you so much for coming on. I, I really appreciate it. You, I love all your questions. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you about the tablet. Please continue. Yeah. I just because I, I fell back. Oh, I know no, Black Star. I, I, that, that was pretty much it. I just wanted people to see what brand it was. But that's cool. Uh, Do you find it hard, uh, like when when you started, like? transition into yes. using the the um the tablet so to say because i i tried it as well uh for like editing photos but i find it so hard like yes you kind of see what you're doing like uh, i have uh, the same type that you showed the first one but i find it so hard to coordinate what i'm doing uh watching yeah. the screen but doing it on the on the tab and i i never really took on you took it on i wondered how did you find that transition it was a huge learning curve because I'm so used to seeing what I'm drawing. Right. So I had to learn to uh, position my head straight and, yep. and make sure that I'm following along. And I, 
a lot slower. I notice. Uh, I don't. If you see me sketch on paper, I'm just going crazy. But right. on computer, I'm very steady. I'm just kind of like every little stroke. <laughs> the other night when you were doing, that's what I noticed. It was like literally like you were doing like uh, technical drawings. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah, it was and, so. And, and that's not as fun, but uh, I noticed that when I draw digitally. Then I go back to drawing on paper. Um, I, I have a steadier hand and more focus. So I, I think oh. it, it, it's almost like a yin and yang. Uh, they, they help each other out. So when I hand draw, it helps me draw digitally. But when I draw digitally, it helps me draw traditionally. So it, it's a give and take. <laughs> That's pretty. Well, it's good, though. I mean, if you're, get, you're getting something out of it, it's strengthening your you know uh, your other skills. It's a... It's a, a it's definitely something that's uh, beneficial to you. And it's good to know other ways. You know, you're always going to have your preferential way of doing things, but it's always good to be versatile that way. Yeah, and uh, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have a way to stream the drawing other than, you know, putting a camera on my drawing, uh, like doing traditional art. Right. So it's opened up that avenue that I didn't have prior. And so um, it's just nice to have – that type of technology available because 20, 20, 25 years ago, I don't think the technology was there yet. Even no. close. <laughs> I tried it in 2000. I went to school. That's when I studied, uh, 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 well, they called it multimedia integration at the time. And let me tell you, the technology was not there yet. It was the most <laughs> thing. And I'm no artist. I'm no artist, but even just trying to do the most simple, I, I found it completely, and I think you had to learn how to, it would probably take you, you know, it would be a trade all on its own just to learn how to use one of those, like just to, you know, not to become like the perfect artist, but just to be able to do anything with it, it was so cumbersome. I'm so surprised that, like, Susie Channel, she said when she worked for Marvel, uh, she used Wacom tablet in 80s. Yep. In oh, yeah. 80s? yeah. Wow. Yep. They are they are the standard um, now. Oh, definitely! I'm just surprised about the '80s. <laughs> I'm stunned. Well, it was really it was really rudimentary before because they used yeah. to use serial ports and not USB. But um, the uh, Apple and now Microsoft are kind of eating into their market share. Right. Um, so, like the Apple Pencil, and then the uh, the Microsoft. I think it's called the it's the little Microsoft tablet. I forgot what it's called, but those are becoming like where artists are going to now because they're cheaper. Uh, that the other tablet that I showed you that had the screen on it um, in 2015 that cost me three thousand oh. dollars. Wow! Yeah, it's an expensive piece of equipment, but um, Microsoft uh, uh, Surface, the Surface Pro you're talking Surface about, right? Pro. Yep, that's it. Oh yes, 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 yeah. And the Surface Pro is about twelve hundred dollars, so it's a quarter, you know, a third the price. And, and it does, and it's comparable to use. Not really. The uh, pressure sensitivity is not as high. Okay. Um, the, this one has eight thousand pressure sensitive um, positions, whereas the Microsoft only has a thousand twenty four. So it has the an eighth of the pressure sensitivity. So okay. if I were to draw a thin line, it would show up better on, on my tablet than it would on a Surface. But if someone's looking for something affordable that they can just get their art on, it's worth it to save a little bit of money and go with the Surface. But I bought that in twenty in 2015, and it still runs perfectly today. Well, today. yeah. So you get what you pay for. And um, the Surfaces are known to break very easily. So mm -hmm. I... I, I felt like I went with the right choice. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's your livelihood, you know, and that's the big difference between somebody who's, like, not sure yet. Right. The surface would be a good intermediate way to decide, and you can always sell it within early on. You can get most of your money back and then put it towards, you know. Well, the, the, newer, version, the newer version of it uh, costs about the same, but they got rid of a lot of features, so it's better to stay with the older model, but. Oh, <laughs> That that computer was the first time that I told my I told myself I was gonna splurge. Yep. 
It's well, yeah. Like, it's investment. Yeah. You know, when we do do it for the, something that we love doing and we do as our day-to-day -day thing as well, and a part of our self-development, it's investment, I find. Yeah. It's not a gadget. It's investment into ourselves. Like us, when we're working here, we do a Tech Talk Tuesday. We actually talk. We take Q&A and we talk about shooting, editing, all that stuff. And we talk about editing and people are saying, you know, like I use Filmora or I use, you know, some are even using Windows Movie Maker. I use Premiere because that's what I do. That's my that's my whole thing on YouTube, where somebody else, their main thing is uh, making f violins. So it's okay. You know, it depends how far you want to go into something. Not everybody needs a Ferrari to go for milk at the corner store. Right. And, and uh, my, like when I buy a car, I get the base model. When yeah. I buy a TV, I get the, the smallest size I can. Yep. But when it comes to my art stuff, I like to get top of the line. <laughs> because that's your that's your thing. That's you know yeah. so that's where you'll put your money into, and then that's what makes sense. And then you don't have to go buy a new one down the road because you bought the crappiest one. <laughs> well, yeah, and, or you get some guy that's like, uh, you know, I was thinking about drawing a little bit, and I, you know, I doodle here and there. I want to get into it. So yeah, Surface would be a good introduction tool instead of dropping the three grand right away. Which I watch some people do, and then that you know they don't do anything with it. I mean, if you have yeah. the money to burn, go yeah, for it. Yeah, I think it. that's why my wife was okay with it because she was like, I, "I know you're gonna use it to make art. It's yeah, not, it's just gonna sit in a box." Um, no, no. The one that Doodles by Doug uh, brought up, the Helion and Spiroi, uh -huh. those those are kind of like uh, even cheaper alternatives for for draw people who want to draw, but you have to have it tethered to a computer. Okay. Uh, which, um, whereas this one, it, it, it's its own computer, so right. I can use it as a secondary computer. And when I used to travel all the time, it was like my mobile office. So I oh. loved it. Now it's just sitting there because I've been using this one for live streams. <laughs> so it's been quite versatile to you, to say the least. Uh, yeah, well, it's, you know, I still use it every now and then if I go to karate with my girls and i just want to get some work done on the side uh, that's nothing wrong with that it's good to have something that's used the more multi-use especially for three grand the better so <laughs> it definitely helps it pay for itself sorry uh i have a oh. question for somebody that uh like for kids because i've seen um that river and longbows outdoors wants to get a, a, t a tab or pad yeah. <laughs> for the sun. Uh, for somebody, for the kids that want to get into the drawing and especially the comic uh, books and animation, what would you uh, suggest, like what what to start with or how even to start uh, getting into something like that? Well, the, the biggest mistake I feel that, you know, kids make is that they want to copy the the cartoons and comics that they read yeah and the problem with that is that that's somebody's interpretation i i always tell the kid is to draw real life um so draw a fruit draw your hand draw a lamp um draw a table so that way you can come up with your own interpretation of real life things and okay. so they, so and then their imagination goes wild it's like uh and also tinkering. Uh, I used to take apart a lot of electronics. So when I draw robots now, I have the images of all those electronics I used to take apart. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's... Integration of your skills. Yeah, again. yeah exactly. That's amazing. That's so cool. And, and, and I always tell kids to just uh, use their imaginations and, and to have fun. That's the number one. It, it's... If they don't have fun doing it, then what's the point? <laughs> it's, like, it's like music, you know. Uh, some people want to force their kids, like, no, this is a G chord, and they're, like, near gluing their fingers. <laughs> Let them enjoy the instrument first. It's not important if they don't learn every note right away or every chord. Let them just get familiar. Let them uh, experiment with it. And then when they go to learn those things and apply the techniques, it comes a lot easier, I find. Well, that that's the... That's what sucked uh, when I went to middle school because they kind of push an instrument on you. And uh, I didn't like the instrument that they gave me. I, I wanted to do guitar. And yeah. they are like, well, we don't offer guitar. We, you got to do a brass instrument or string. <laughs> That's it. And I was just like, no, I don't want to do it. I'll just take another art class. <laughs> oh, God's too bad. <laughs> but, you know, I still love, like, I can't play the guitar for, for my life, but 
sometimes I like to just hold it and just, you know, mess around with the chords. Well, like, yeah. I mean, same as somebody picks up a pencil and doodles on the side, you know. Yeah. There's something about it. It's not that they're an artist. They just enjoy that feeling of it, you know. Yeah, exactly. I just enjoy just sitting there. Or I, I have a keyboard at my parents' house, and sometimes when I go over, I'm just, like, playing on it. <laughs> That's so cool. Making noises. Everybody learns like chopsticks or they got something they can just kind of pick out or they hear a couple of notes that rings with them they remember, you know. Well, the, the only four notes I ever learned it, uh, it, on a piano was the uh, Terminator theme. Oh. <laughs> so I'd always keep playing that and drive my brother crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. a win-win. Because <laughs> yeah. it's such an easy chord, but it's so I, – I loved, I loved how they used it in that movie. Well, so that's – Stayed with me. <laughs> That's what makes it so memorable. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, like uh, going going back to the kids is uh, uh, Susie Channel brought up a good point. S schools these days don't have any fun, and yeah, uh, I noticed that with my girls. They they come home and they're like, "I'm so bored from school. I don't want to go back." Yeah. And I remember when I was a kid, going to school was fun because you'd be there in recess trading trading baseball cards yep. or we talk about what's better sega genesis or super nintendo yep. we, you know just it, it was fun to go to school now it's just all standardized testing so they just oh, yeah. it's yeah, well, it's not fun because it can be too dangerous god forbid somebody says something <laughs> yeah. or somebody has something that one doesn't i think they're policing them too much that they are afraid yeah. of interaction it is so yeah. i agree and and obviously in the class as well there's so little room for being creative creative so for somebody with a more creative uh, mindset uh, it's very yeah. hard sometimes to to fit in in this very straight uh, you know uh, for example mass thinking you yeah. know if you're completely different uh, uh, wired uh, so it's hard, yeah. it's hard. I can't imagine being a kid right now going to school because yep. I'm so I'm, I'm just out there and so I, I just have a lot of fun and I'm always goofy. I crack jokes about everything. And so I'll probably get kicked out of every class I'm in. <laughs> if I'm oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was even back then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got kicked out for other reasons. <laughs> I got kicked out for, for not paying attention and doodling on tables. Oh, <laughs> I was like, hey, you took my paper away. I got to draw on something. <laughs> exactly. You can't <laughs> slow me down. <laughs> kids today are almost like a bit of a show because the one thing they're not doing is festering any passion in kids now in school. And I find that's dwindling a lot as the arts go down. You know, and people put that, as the money started getting shorter, everybody said, well, then get rid of the arts, get rid of the arts. But it's important for for development as well. Well, they've taken away that. Plus, also, you take away the physical education side has also gone down a lot. Yeah, well, so yeah, almost or kids. <laughs> no, it is. You know, there's no stimulation left. You know, and 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 then they're supposed to sit there for the whole day. No wonder well, kids are getting diagnosed with ADHD more and more, and all these things like that. They can't burn any energy off. Well, the funny thing is, they're, they're always taking away um, arts and music. Yeah. But what's the first thing people listen to or watch when they get out of work or school One or Art, music. <laughs> exactly and if you go into high-end schools what's the first thing they promote is arts and music right you know you look at the better ivy league schools or the better private schools and stuff that's a huge mandate of theirs is the arts so there's got to be some reason why they're doing it yeah because they want to push sports and you know yeah. and make people standardize and i don't mind sports but it you know the arts and literature yep and all that stuff is what makes humans humans exactly. <laughs> and they push sports like you brought up a good point because there is a big difference between that they push sports but they've taken away physical education right. taken away the part that makes it inclusive for all kids to be burning off that energy but yes, they've put more into the organized sports where only a few kids, selected few get to benefit and the rest are kind of shot to the side. It's the 1% of the 1%. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's it makes it smaller and smaller. <laughs> yes, you got that right. That's a very good way of putting it. And it's true. And it's sad because the kids really are the ones who pay for it, you know? Because I see that with my kids. Like my daughter has got a lot of energy and she's a great example. Or my son, who I wish sometimes was more energy 
had more energy, you know. <laughs> Not that, I don't mean them as lazy. They're just two very different people. Right. And they both could benefit from more physical education from, the like, the different spectrums. Well, that's the reason why I, I made the effort of as soon as my kids wanted to get on uh, – to get to do something, I put them in karate because they didn't get enough gym time at school. So yep. now they're 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 working out for forty five minutes and they're learning um, all these positive things that, in karate that they don't teach in school. One hundred percent, I agree with you. One hundred percent, modesty. They don't teach respect and courtesy. No, nope. they just expect you to know it. <laughs> well, they do. That's exactly what it is. There's nothing like that at, at schools anymore. It's unbelievable, and you can see it in what's coming. You could, uh, our children. That's one thing I can say is, especially like they have respect. And our daughter is seven, son is eleven. Every day they have chores. Uh, they do the supper dishes. They take out the garbage. Is their responsibility? Their rooms, and I see a lot of their friends don't get any of that. But it's important to me that. If I if we don't get them to think for themselves and be able to take care of themselves in any shape or fashion, who's going to at this point? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. And that, and I'm and that's a dis, that's a disservice we're doing to them if we don't do it. Uh, I I I I think that's why I act the way I do in public because I want my girls to see that you can be a goofball and mm -hmm. you can be outgoing. Yep. And, and, you know, because especially here in New York, everyone is kind of like doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody really says hi to each other. Right. Blinders yeah. on. Yeah. And, you know, I always try to spark up a conversation with anybody, especially if I'm bored. Uh, <laughs> you know, especially at karate, sometimes we're there for two, two, three hours because the girls' classes are not, not right after each other. Right. It feels like the whole waiting room is talking with me because I'm constantly starting a conversation here and there. And, and my rule is I try never to bring up politics or religion. I leave yes. those things out and I only talk about fun things. hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Yes. It's, it's better to play on the safe side. No, if you avoid those two, you've cut out about 98% of the conflicts that could come. from. Right. Right. Those are the two things that people take way too, to yeah. the heart. Oh yeah. So, as long as you don't talk about that. Yep. Fine. Or sports. Sports people take sports way yep, too soon. Exactly. <laughs> but you can talk about so much and people like my sister used to tell my friend all the time or her friends all the time. She said my brother should work for the FBI because he knows everybody. <laughs> and that's because I talk to everybody. And we'll be out sometimes and she's looking over at me like uh the other day at the kid's dentist. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, we go there every six months. Now I know the security guard and I talk to him every time we're there. We go and we <laughs> actually you know, seek a cigarette and just have a chat. And yeah. say, you know, when I walk in, he knows me. He knows him by face <laughs> now. It's so crazy. Yeah. I think I think it I think it's a smoker thing too. Yeah, I, it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to be a smoker, so I remember how I used to go outside. And you, you you bum a cigarette or yeah, someone yeah. off you, then you start a whole conversation. I yeah. think that's where I learned it from. Yeah. <laughs> it stuck with me. It does. It's like its own little private club, you know. It's like members yeah. only. <laughs> he doesn't smoke though. He just comes out yeah. with me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is like at conventions, I know other artists that that still smoke, and yeah. they'll be like, "Hey, you want to come outside for for you know? I'm gonna go smoke." We'd be out there almost an hour just chit-chatting with other fan fans of the show yeah. and then then they'd come back to our table and buy something because <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh man you're pretty cool uh, <laughs> it's a good sales pitch. <laughs> well it's it's customer service you know exactly gotta keep them happy my friend <laughs> they're a fickle group those smokers so you gotta be on their good side <laughs> And smoking is bad. Yeah, smoking is bad. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Thank God, Train Man is gone. We we are, we we have some. We have moderators. Uh, well, there's James Cox and uh, what's her name? Uh, Terrell. Terrell. I always got. I'm sorry, Terrell. And we have another guy named Train Man, which we found out the other day. He was excited because it was his birthday, and we're like, <laughs> oh, that's great. Because he said, yeah, I think it was you asked how old he was going to be. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be 10. It's like, oh, we got a moderator that's 10. <laughs> what? 
well, you know, you don't know, you don't know the picture, you talk, and it kind of yeah. makes the person makes sense. You hey, and say, you're giving him his first little uh, bit of uh, responsibility, too. Well, yeah, know? he was getting a little uh, trigger happy with the old time out buttons. And stuff, so oh. <laughs> but who knows? You know, you never, you can't tell what age you are just by somebody. But yeah, our first moderator, and he's still is not, is uh, a 10-year-old. So. Well, I remember uh, someone came over to my channels. They supported it, commented. And so I, I, I went to their channel, and I, I, I liked and, and, and subbed and uh, supported back. And, and I'm looking, I'm like, this is a this is an eight year old. It's it, you, you don't expect it, but it's cool that you know at eight years old they're already getting it. They have a channel. And oh, definitely. They, you know, it's it's crazy. They have a whole new world that we never even dreamed of living. We were just talking about it the other night. Like I wish I would have had this as a teenager. I would have been on it night and day. Like I would have been a broadcasting studio one man show. That's. <laughs> I'm jealous of them. <laughs> well, my my daughter, she started her own channel, but it's it's like it's her just kind of like dancing around and stuff. And I told her, I was like, you might not want to put that up, you know. We, <laughs> I was like, just put it on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing; you can never know how it's going to be with consequences for them in the yep. future. You know, who knows what is going to be important? When her sister not. when her sister plays it for her when she gets married, and then she says, yeah. "Look what I found." <laughs> Yeah, the internet's not like a Polaroid. It's going to no. stay forever. <laughs> right. 100%. You can, you can burn a Polaroid. <laughs> you can't burn the net. <laughs> oh, no, they live in a completely different world than we ever grew up into, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember it was always just uh, cartoons for me, comic books, and video games. And that whole the whole internet didn't really didn't get introduced to me until I was like maybe 12 or 13 is when it was it got you know it blew up and yep. we got our first uh broadband because mm -hmm. we had dial up but it was only for my dad to do his work <laughs> that's funny it was such a bit i remember downloading when oh my god i remember downloading a certain piece of software that's an operating system way back when <laughs> do that kind of stuff <laughs> windows 98 yeah well, i, and, I I remember working in DOS and all oh. that stuff. You know, downloading it on uh, 56K took five nights and 12 <laughs> hours each. Oh, man, that's crazy. And the chat was kind of like you're seeing here, but it was all, it was called a channel called MIRC. And there was channels that would open up their own FTP sites. That's how far that goes back where they turned their own computer into a server. On T1s and. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When back when IQ ex uh, ICQ existed. Anybody's um, wondering, I can't even remember my own name half the time, but my number was 7560841. I still remember my my. Oh, you know, my God. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. I have no idea. And I tested it last year after all these years, and I got in. And one guy that I used to trade stuff with, he's still there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still remember my AIM login. And, oh and AOL Instant Messenger was like... That oh. was your text service. <laughs> well, you see, everybody got screwed in where I lived because they got those AOL CDs, not realizing that the number was calling the states. Oh, they got nailed with huge, huge ass bills. Like, well, you would think with how close we are, they'd finally figure out a way to call each other cheaper. But yeah, I, no. still, I still have to add a package to my cell service just so I can use it over there. But you know, in Europe, every country, as small as they are, every one of them, you still need another. Like, if you're using like uh, pays, you go SIM cards. Yeah. None of them will work in any of the countries. I got a bag of them here, literally a bag of SIM cards. The funny part, though, that uh, yeah. if you're in states, it's cheaper to 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 buy a package to call to Canada. I know there are lots of people, and they've been talking that on media here. Uh, the ones who live by the border are actually going and having their phone packages monthly packages uh, registered in states because yeah. it's cheaper to register them there and use them here as day-to-day -day phones because uh, states offer cheaper uh, North America-wide packages than Canada does. Yep. Uh, and and I, I think that's too why, uh, yeah. why you have to have an unlocked phone in Europe. Again. Yeah. Yes. I was thinking about getting an unlocked phone for when I go to Canada and then just pick up, you know, like a FIDO account and just... yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it would be cheaper for you to get the package put on probably than to get it here because you guys' packages are a lot cheaper than ours. That's true. You know? And I only really use my phone over there for GPS because yeah, I, I know. Especially because Toronto isn't the same it was in 2005. There's yeah. so much construction everywhere. Oh. Everybody <laughs> living in Toronto is using my GPS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doodles by Doug. By the way, where are you? Are you in the same area as uh, South? Because we have to be careful when we go downtown Buffalo or Niagara Falls because yeah. our phones will jump to Canadian Towers. All the yeah. time. Same with us getting around the border. Same thing for us. you got to be so yeah. careful that R doesn't pop up. <laughs> Sometimes when we're coming back from Canada, my phone will stay on Rogers and up until we hit the 90. Yeah. So weird. <laughs> yeah. Please, though. And, and, and it does jump away in you very quickly. Well, they, um, I, I just get scared. I'm like, uh, I should turn this off and turn it back on. I'm, I might hit a, a sprint tower when I'm here because uh, I I use I use GPS and I stream music or or podcasts. That's pretty much I use my phone for. Well, <laughs> I yeah, really yeah. call people. <laughs> That's what we were saying the other night. A phone. That's funny. They still call it a phone. It's like the only thing. It's, it's almost the least thing it's used for anymore. Yeah, they should just go back to calling them PDAs. Yes, exactly, because it suits it for what it's used. I agree. Right. 100%. It's a personal device assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bag here. I think I got thirteen from thirteen different countries. I got SIM cards. Uh, Susie uh, Channel. I'm actually in Rochester, New York. So I'm like, if you look at Lake Ontario, there's Toronto. We're like right below it. <laughs> that's about yeah. That's a perfect example. <laughs> yeah, that boat that really really well. lives because it seems like they are somewhere right there. When we were in, the, <laughs> I was going to say like about prices of cell phones in Latvia. When we went for the summer, uh, we got the uh, the SIM card. We got it through Xenia because it was a two uh, came out to a two euro break if you were a citizen, right? Yeah. We had unlimited calls. And six gigs of data a month, and it came out to six dollars Canadian. Wow. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Iceland at the top of the freaking world where you should cost a fortune to do anything. Right. I have my SIM card there. I always get the same package. I get uh, no, it's five gigs of data. Yep. And five hundred minutes for eighteen dollars Canadian. What? So, yep. I would love to have that here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's why, because everywhere we travel, we do, we do a lot of driving in Europe and places, so we're always using my phone as the GPS, and that's why I need a data pack. Because a rental car place will want 25, in Europe, they want 25 bucks a day Canadian for a GPS. Oh, that's that's too much. Yeah, where Actually, you can buy a SIM card, you know, for five, ten bucks and have enough data to use to get you through. It's yeah. unbelievable. Same and thing. technology hopefully will keep moving forward where they'll just get rid of GPSs too. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Or at least make them global so you don't need to connect anymore to, you know, to uh, to a net to get the names and stuff. Another thing over there too is flying. Like flying over there is so dirt cheap. It's <laughs> the, the trains are expensive. It's the flights that are nothing. I flew from Edinburgh, Scotland to Liverpool for $15.50 Canadian. That's cheap. Yep. You, we looked the other year. There was We were going to do five cities together, and we were flying out of Riga, the capital of Latvia, so it's not like a, a big hub like London or anywhere. We were going to do five cities for 300 bucks for the two of us. That's that's crazy. It cost me 300 bucks just to go down to Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's the same country. <laughs> you would never want to know it because Canada's got one of the highest flight costs in the world. It is beyond pathetic what you got to fly from here to Vancouver. You wouldn't believe the price. You're looking at a grand. Well, the, the that's yeah. uh, actually when I was looking at because I, I was going to do a show in Toronto and I was looking at flights to go to Toronto. I yeah. was like, holy crap, I might as well just drive. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said about the how much was it? 300. How much did you say to fly to Florida? 300. Yeah, about 300 bucks. Okay. Two years ago, I had my trade show in Iceland. It was cheaper for me to drive from Montreal to Toronto than spend three hundred dollars for the ticket from Montreal to Toronto alone. Wow! <laughs> for a fifty-five minute flight, you're only horizontal for literally fifteen minutes in the whole thing. But I, I I hate flying, but sometimes you just need to get there fast. But... Oh, I love flying. That's the one thing I truly miss. I love everything about it. 
I miss flying. I missed when I left the business, the music business, because I used to fly all the time. And then when we were traveling, and I miss it every time. I don't even want to go to the airport or pass it because I think I want to start bawling my eyes. Out. Well, at least now you get to travel where you want to, not all yeah, where no. you have to. <laughs> That's true. Uh, the flying part is what bothers me, but I like the hustle and bustle of getting on a plane. Yes. And some people somewhere. hate that. I love it. I love that. It's yeah, like, that feeling when you land and somewhere yeah. new and you're ready to explore, you know, it's you can't beat that. And even when you get to the airport, like the kind of like the hustle and bustle, the excitement, there's all people coming and going, you know, all it's an exciting place. I really love that part of it because people take that for granted. You know, oh. everybody is at the airport for a reason. It's not and it's not like I just came for a walk, you know, they're flying halfway across the world. They got a business opportunity coming up. They're getting married. I mean, there's a million stories just in that airport going on every moment. And they're probably all tired too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I I thrive on that kind of stuff. I love it. I grew up in a small, small town in eastern Quebec. So I think my whole life was based on wanting that rush, like all the you know, I was always craving that faster pace and stuff yeah. like that. Uh it's always changed for me because you know, I grew up in the city and so I I, I feel comfortable in, in fast paced environments. Yeah. But now as I'm getting a little older, like my dream is to just get like a farmhouse mm -hmm. out in the sticks in the middle yeah. of nowhere. <laughs> That's Xenia's dream right now too. She's That's into right. that. Uh, somewhere far I, away. Can I just own travel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I being in a car for 20, 30 minutes, just bumper to bumper with someone. Yeah. I, yeah. The traffic doesn't win me over. I'll be the first to say that one. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you, like, if you ever go to New York city, it's the worst for traffic. Oh, yeah. I used to be, a, I was a 19 year old guy. I'd lived a year or two in Montreal, but I mean, I used to come here to visit and I did Toronto. And then I decided to become a truck driver. And when you get, you know, down with a 53 foot trailer running through parts of Brooklyn and stuff like that, you realize just how big the city is. And you're definitely not prepared for it in any shape or form. As long as you didn't go into the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Back then, there was a lot, you know, we were told by cops never to stop at the lights at night. Just to drive through, slow down, but never stop. You'll never get a ticket because you know, between a truck and a trailer, you have those hoses. Yeah, well, that's your airline hoses, that's what supplies the air to your trailer. <clears throat> they used to jump up on there at lights and take a knife and slit the lines, and then you lose all your air to your trailer. The big springs come out in your sitting duck, and they would rob you at gunpoint right there. Ah, uh, yeah. now it's a lot better, it's not as bad as it used to be. Like now, they don't. Uh, even if you got to come in at night, they usually have lock-in gates to keep you at. You know, they get you out in the day whenever possible. The security's better. They cleaned up a lot of those neighborhoods. But when you drive truck, you're always going to the worst part of town. Right. No and you're really the park in the worst traffic, too. Yeah, exactly. There's not a yuppie neighborhood surrounded by a bunch of factories in that area, you know? Right. Yes, they take factories that are abandoned and turn them, but not running ones. Or, but you know, all those down their place or by ports are horrible. So yeah, you never and, get to see the scenic side of it. <laughs> and and you never know what's around the corner. Sometimes you're just – it's always at the worst time. Like yeah. <laughs> you think you're so relaxed and then something pops up out of nowhere. <laughs> That's when it always happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it feels so calm. Yeah. <laughs> that, gonna That's when the lightning strikes. You're on edge. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> 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 this is true. That's why <laughs> That's why they get you when they get you. Yeah. So it's been – we're going to – I, I can't thank you enough for coming on tonight. Well, I can't thank you enough for having me. I had a blast. I'm so happy you got to know more about you. I love your channel. Uh, well, definitely we'll have to have you back uh, when we can set up your drawing and talking yep. at the same time. Because, again, I still have so many questions like Germany and all those that you mentioned at the beginning. But yep. I will keep them for the next time. And I will have, we would love to have you again. Uh, what next time I'll try is I'll try to set up my phone as a secondary camera. Okay. I see that Google uh, Hangouts lets you yes a secondary camera. Yep. So I'll try that, and then I, I can draw as I'm talking, and we'll try that. Would, that would be, so be cool. amazing. That's so so amazing, and yep. you are uh, really a man of uh, many talents. That's yep. so amazing. It's only I'm talents talking. when you learn you, out of necessity. <laughs> well, necessity breeds great things, my friend. And uh, you really do have an amazing talent. 
Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. And thank you for having me on. I had a blast answering questions. I wish I wish I could be here all night. <laughs> oh. Well, like I say, we definitely have to be getting I'm sure the wife wants you a bit too. It's yours, your birthday. And that was very generous on your birthday. Yes, I, I really thought it was so nice of you. So uh, yeah. I, I hope you had a fun birthday. <laughs> oh, I did. I, I had a blast. It, it, right before the stream, we we my uh my wife bought a pizza for me. So I, I uh. We did celebrate my birthday before I got on, so it, it, it was nice to share it with, with everyone here. And so I had a blast. That's unbelievable. That's so nice of you to say. I'm so happy you were here tonight, and uh, we're definitely going to be in touch real soon, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. You take, take care, care of yourself, okay? I will. Bye. Bye. Have a great night. Bye now. You. Bye. Is he amazing? Right? Oh my god, yes. And if you yeah. haven't still subscribed to his channel, go and check it out. Yeah. Uh, if you if you're not convinced yet, yeah. I don't know what will convince you because yeah. uh to hear about his amazing talents and he's such a talented artist, you gotta go and see his work. Oh, uh, yeah. I just posted the link uh, uh, a little bit above, so please go and check it out. Uh he deserves so much more. Uh I really think the guy is gonna have a really oh, yeah. great future. In, in drawing in, in animation. Yeah. <laughs> Bottle cool. caps, he's still young enough to enjoy a birthday. LOL. <laughs> you are so busy. Well, Bottle caps, we got to get you on. We got to find a way. We got to get you on. Oh, so. Doodle is from Buffalo. That's what they were talking about. Uh, that. The other guys are on the same place yep. almost. So. <laughs> Doodle, I hope you added our channel because I'd really like to keep connected. So. Yeah, we're already connected, but that's okay. Oh, we are? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh my God! It's not my night tonight. <laughs> That's why my husband has a ten-year-old younger wife. That's right, my retirement IT plan. Me. <laughs> Sometimes my brain gets fried too, but at least I'm younger. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle caps. You're stuck at five ninety-seven. See, you got six board supporters yeah. in the last hour. By the way, I was just reminding uh, Bottle Caps an hour ago that he hit his 500 on the 12th of April. And now, not even a week later, he's almost hitting his 600. Yeah. No hassle, no stress. He's right there. So if you haven't supported Bottle Caps yeah. yet, go over and do it. The quirky Canadian. Yes, he is. No, we love him to pieces. And Doodles, thank you so much. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much. And we are here every night from 8 to 10 yeah. or longer p.m. <laughs> except for Sunday. Susie, thank you so much. I, I, yeah, it yeah. was so amazing to get to know that you were a colorist. It's, yeah. uh, that's what we love about this, is getting to know all these interesting facts about everybody. And as we see, oh. it's not only about our guests, it's about our uh, supporters, visitors as well. That's so amazing. So an overall, I love your y'all voice and send send you happiness from New Orleans, Louisiana. Well, oh. I grew up in the Gatsby Z, which is right across from New Brunswick, which of course is true Acadians as well, just like you guys. So <laughs> there is a connection. You guys are doing a great job. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. happened with the stream. Some people uh, I've seen were booted out, uh, like Kilos and Heathens were booted out for a bit, yeah. and uh, some few other people during the stream. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe it's a YouTube issue today. It's uh, I hope you uh, you were able to get back if yeah. you were one of those. Uh, no one want to leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, and Sal so once amazing. again just wrote here thing, great host, and you were an amazing, amazing guest. We're so, I'm so happy you got to get on the on the stream. Yeah, Susie was so nice. She tweeted me uh, a link to um, Cole um, store online where they have my Wonder Belt perfume that I was talking about yesterday. Oh, because I was saying that I can't find it. Okay, because they uh, stopped making it. So she was nice enough to get in touch with me on Twitter and give me a link for it. So I haven't checked though if they do, uh, if they are available in Canada through that though. But I, I do appreciate it. It was so sweet that you thought of me. I thought it was so nice. So mwah, it was so great. Bottle caps, thank you guys for all your help. Oh. Well, how much are yeah. you? Let's go check yeah. there. Let's do the la North American trains. Hello. Uh, oh, we're. We're just 
please, 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 please uh, subscribe to us and leave a message so I can go and write to your channel right after we're done the live stream. And we're on every night except for Sundays. And I, I got to get a train guy on here soon. That's my next. Uh, uh, yes, for sure. Yeah. And please, uh, yeah, leave, get us a message if you want to be a guest on our show. We have a great lineup for the rest of the week, but yeah. we still have some spots left for the next week. Definitely. And uh, we would love to have you guys. You're also amazing. Love to know Terrell more about is you. Here. Terrell, Terrell, I love that name. Terrell. Terrell Emerson uh, TV. I love it. Yeah. I just like Terrell. <laughs> Take that riff to it. Uh, I have I'm a house now. in New Orleans, Louisiana by railroad tracks full of oh. beautiful stained glass. Oh, nice. I, I love that. Some people complain when they're by railway tracks. I would be outside all day watching. Yeah, them. if you haven't yeah. supported Bottle Caps, please go yeah. and give a like. He only three away from six hundred. I just posted a link, so uh, just uh, go and check it out. And if you like it, support. Uh, he's been amazing uh, supporter in yeah. our uh, stream. Thank you so much, uh, Susie, for coming and being such a active uh, a participant in our live stream yes. tonight. All through. We love your channel. I still remember making you laugh when you were. When, <laughs> I don't know if you want me to. Tell you, I said I made you blush. She was uh, those uh, cream cakes. Yes. And she was sitting there rubbing with her fingers like that. And I said, yeah, it's getting a little blue, but I enjoyed the review. <laughs> I never. I still think of that every time I can see with the. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god! god. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, North American trains, please. Uh, like I say, do that and come back as well because uh, I definitely have uh, trying to connect more with the train guys as well. I got to meet some. I definitely want to meet more. Oh, yes, the cream cakes. Yes, 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 that's what it is. I'm telling you, if I was to take that clip out and just change the music onto it and slow down your fingers by 20%, I think we'd all be kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> Custom cards. Uh, not only is your channel great to watch, I've gotten over 100 supporters over the last two weeks. Lots of great people here. Oh. Thank you so much. Uh, I went from close to 1,000 <laughs> to 300. Three, uh, you That's dropped? Right. Is that what you're saying? Uh, wow. I hope not. That's kind of weird. Uh, I would be writing a letter to you too. Yep. So, because uh, some fluctuation is normal. Uh, everybody goes through it. But to lose like 70% of your supporters is yeah. quite uh, unusual. So I would be contacting YouTube support, uh, getting yep. them a message out and see what they say about it. Because uh, uh, that might be some mistake to, you know, AI and and so on. Yeah, yeah that's really good. Yeah, so I, I don't know what channel that that's shocking. Yeah, it's more more than shocking. I uh, wow. Uh, but as we said, like uh, it gets unsupported automatically. Oh, okay. You don't show your because I want to go look. You don't show your subs. Yeah, really, you should be showing your uh, subscription account yeah. just because it it. Uh, Prompt people to subscribe if they can see how many do you have in the I'm a creator uh, Chats and stuff like that when I see people talking that's the one thing people notice they do a lot better once they start showing their uh, Numbers and it's funny if you're because you have a lower number it actually helps you more I've seen that as we're getting higher up now. We don't it's not as easy to get people to come to us they, I think they almost think well now that they're higher. They don't want to you know they don't want to support anybody else. So if, if you're hiding it because your numbers are lower, it actually works better in your favor to show it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like hiding something, although yeah. you're not doing kind of, but the people's minds work mysterious ways. So you want to get more supporters, uh, probably would be better if you show how many do you have, no matter how many are there. I still can't get over that. Yeah, and please, uh, please write a note to YouTube mm -hmm. support. Just a quick note and tell them what happened and see what they say because it can be also a, a mistake, you know. Um, I love oh. our studios, good beings, very kind, good people. Oh, yeah, guys, you're, you're so sweet. 
That's we, true. <laughs> you, uh, we have such such great supporters. I, I know, love it. It's just so yeah warm. I I wouldn't do this if it wasn't for you guys. Not like I'm saying I'm doing it for you guys. Like you guys no, it make just, it it's worth just it. So nice uh, to hear yeah. the you know to to hear this. Um, oh yeah, I'm just uh, even lost for words. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so nice. Uh, I, I like that you guys are all actively involved in uh, supporting each other and talking with each other with the guests, and it feels like no matter you know, uh, it's not the conversation only with the guests that we have, no matter how amazing they are, but it's always a conversation among all of us. Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys in the chat and the person that is our guests and us. Mm -hmm. And that was that's what we like so much, and we try as much uh, to get everybody involved in the conversation uh, because it's awesome. You know, it's about all of us. Yeah. Like we say about our uh, Tech Tuesdays, you know, me and I have questions, <laughs> me and you yeah. have questions, yeah. and and me and you have answers. Exactly. Uh, we all are here for each other. We all found each other through community, and this is just extending the community. And, yeah. And. It's being nice there for because we all have more in common that we really know exactly. Like I got to know so much about Susie, uh, for example, tonight. It's amazing. Would have never guessed, uh, you know. And and so many other people as well. As we talk with more and more guests, they find more and more similarities among all of us. And and I think that's what makes us so close knit. That our stories intertwine, and we get more associations with our personalities. <coughs> We As I always say, it's more about people, not channels. Definitely. And we forget that. That's exactly what I was going to say. We forget that there's people behind all these videos that go up. And it's amazing how sometimes the person is so much different than what we thought they would be based on the, the content that they share. Yeah. Uh, like I still shocked about the other week when we had uh, Musky Hans on. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who doesn't know, we had Musky Hans uh, who has a channel for his fishing hobby. Well, when he came on our stream, it ended up that we get to know that he's an actually PhD student and yep. in, is investigating the connection between soil and salt uh, concentration and all that. So PhD student in our live stream, uh, I, I'm still shocked by it. So that's just an example of how we really don't know what's going on uh, be, uh, behind the channels. And that's what's so amazing about it. Uh, Steph Hoppel, you're taking photo uh, pictures of the trains. Uh, do you follow us on uh, Instagram? Because I would love to see your images. Are you on Instagram? Or maybe you are uh, on another platform that you post your pictures on. I'd love to see. <laughs> Reasons. Uh, well, thank you for saying that, Pusha Studios. Well, it's true. I mean, our channel is a little, is us. And that's where we found where to fit into it. I mean, we started, like a lot of you guys that are here in the I'm a Creator movement. And we're just an extension of that. But we're not, we're promoting it, but we will always promote it always recommend people to go there i still telling people today like i'm meeting new ones and telling them to go check it out it's a great place to build support we are there we just kind of do it a little differently we are not that we're not that we're yeah. not it we we start we uh, you know as many other channels have gotten support through it and never deny that but uh, mm -hmm. everybody uh you know it's like going to kindergarten and then to school and then to university eventually branch out yeah. and i think each of the channels who are also are or have been a part of i'm creator has uh, found their own uh, niche and what they love yeah. doing and uh, you know, are, are branching out as well, not forgetting it, but no. uh, branching out. And, and we're and helping it in our own way because exactly. you guys are coming here and it's an extension. And if we all did the same channel all day, I feel like the message would get totally lost. And this way, everybody's kind of contributing. Uh, it's like meal time. You don't eat the same thing that you eat for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, for supper, and for snack. And I really believe we're kind of a bit for people like that bedtime snack if you will we i don't want to just sit here on a couch and talk about uh you know uh full xenia folding clothes and me complaining about the hockey team doing bad we could do that you, you could do that <laughs> you guys deserve more than that and we really do put a lot of work into it to uh to uh, uh to uh 
what we bring to you guys. <laughs> It is a lot of work behind here, and I and I think we love doing it. You know, Xenia's always scheduling people, working with Twitter. We have people who uh, uh, reschedule. We've happened a couple times at the last minute, and yeah, there's always more to behind the doors than you think before yeah. you start all this. <laughs> yeah, but, as always. Yeah, but uh, I I enjoy that because yeah. the the end product is so great. Uh, high tracking studios. Uh, there was a question from Custom Cards. Uh, Opera Studio said that you can use two cameras when you stream live. Is that true? And can you use more than I'm two? I'm not sure if you can because he's using OBS, which he can do, but I don't know if we will transfer back to us. That's kind of the catch with it. The problem is, is that Hangouts is really good at doing multi-panel chats, but it's awful pretty much at everything else, where OBS is great at everything else except for multi-panel chats. Yeah. So that's kind of the catch. You can also do from two different accounts. Like if yeah. you wanna, if you wanna fool it, yeah, uh, do your stream from your own account, and then the secondary, well, the other cameras from other account. Invite yourself in, and then you can switch to but from one to But there's another. a trick with that. You got to be careful. Is yeah. you got to make sure that you do have a lot of not everybody will say bandwidth, which is true, but it's your upload, upload that counts. Yeah. And upload is usually the poorer side of any bandwidth. So. That's where it can get tricky. Yeah. So if you have yeah. it good, in a good level, then you can do it. If not, then probably not. But like I was saying a while ago, guys, really, uh, really in, find your own voice. Remember where you came from. Always remind people where they can grow and uh, do it in your own fashion. That's really important to remember. And do that in everything you do on YouTube. Uh, Yes, we hit a 1K mark, but we're not done growing. We're just beginning. And uh, I like meeting channels. I've joined one today that had 13 subscribers. And I think no less or no worse than the one that has uh, 20,000. Every, everybody has a voice here. And when I first, when we first started, excuse me, we only had 42, and there was lots of bigger channels that helped us. And really, in the scheme of things, we're what? I, I think we just hit 1285, which is great. It's huge. Never thought we'd get this high in such a short time. But we're not a gigantic channel. I mean, we're a blip. I check on social blade ranking. We're 3.6 million something or other. But when we started this in February, we were actually 11 million. So in that scheme of things, we've jumped 6 million ahead. But there's still lots, you know, we'd only dream of being that size. Just always remember to support each other and join all the chats. And like I'm creator, there's a lot of new ones coming in on those chats that uh, they're waiting for somebody like us to help them out as well. Same as here. Well, Tracking Studio is asking, what is a good camera to live stream with that is or that is not expensive? I assume you would. Yeah. You would want to know not expensive. Well, you want to tell what we have? Yeah. Right now we're using a hundred dollar. We just bought it after what a second or third live stream, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and it's the Microsoft, uh, the Logitech, excuse me, I should say, the C nine twenty two, and that's what we use. Uh, we're not running a camera through right now, so, and it does the trick for what we do. I mean, um, if this is taking off the way it is, and it seems to be, uh, I maybe will upgrade later. But for so far, it's done everything we want. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I you know, yeah. I mean, it depends again, you know, the HD cameras are different prices. This seems to be good. It also came with a little cute tripod that I can't show you now, but yeah. I, I just love that thing. I thought, I think it's so cute, but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but there are many out there and like if you check Amazon, there's a whole different kinds you can check and, they're great. You don't really need any bells and whistles on it, really. Just going to see if I can find um, it true. You know. Yeah, uh, also, lots of laptop cameras are good enough, too. It just depends, again, what kind of uh, laptop do you have. So, Oh, thank you. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Steph, uh, Polly, you have Facebook is run by fans, by your fans. What is yep. I want to check your Facebook. Yep. Here, in the meantime, there's there's the camera that we use. So you can see it comes with a little tripod. 
Here's another picture of it. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it unfolds too. See, I didn't know. Yeah. So the bottom the unfolds? Right here. Oh, there yep, you go. The I didn't know that we yeah. have this option. Because <laughs> we um, never keep it on top of the laptop. That's why. Oh, see. that's what it's yeah. for. Yeah, I'm not a tech savvy. <laughs> there we go. Um, there we go. Now, because of your different bands, my channel is Dem Demos on YouTube, so it's me for sure. Okay. Uh, are you going to be secretive or can I find you on Facebook? <laughs> oh, it, just, it just got very uh, interesting. There's almost no information on your channel. Uh, like, I mean, you have your videos, but there's no like about section or anything. Uh, ah! <laughs> and uh, you, yeah, and you have fan page on Facebook. I would like to know more. You all are so cool together and uplifting. Oh. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, lots yeah. of the uh, DSLR, uh, well, I don't know about DSLR, but like SLR cameras, some of them are not compatible with uh, direct yeah. streaming. So before you go and spend money on like SLR or D DSLR camera, yeah. like Canon, Nikon, Sony, and all that, uh check if it actually is compatible with live streaming yeah. uh, because sometimes for example it's compatible with live streaming but you can't see what you're doing like it's it's very different like yeah because they're really not meant for that so it's kind of like a side feature yeah and and lots of people use it but mostly for recording videos not for live streaming so check before you buy anything and like a big camera Check it out um, if it works for that or not. Uh, <laughs> you don't make the same mistake I did and buy a crappy Canon. Well, I hope it wasn't point and shoot. <laughs> LOL. Uh, no, my mine is not Canon. Mine is Sony, but yeah. uh, it's an older version. But I'm still happy for it. As we talked before, it's not really doesn't matter what kind of camera do you have. So welcome back this natural journey. <laughs> yes, you guys are still uh, going. we're just saying bye. People didn't want to leave, so yeah. we're kind of just chatting. We were yeah. we were ending the stream like a half an hour ago, but uh, nobody wanted to leave, so we're just uh, talking away. Uh, can you do with uh, a GoPro? I don't think you can do a live with no, a GoPro. I don't believe. I'm not going to say 99% chance no, but... Why I'm saying it, because our balloon man yesterday, uh, he was saying prior to having a stream with us, that he usually has a GoPro he takes videos with, but yesterday he was using his laptop. Yeah. So um, that's why I would assume now. But and as a disclaimer, us. we're not uh, we're not experts on live streaming. Like I've said time and time again, we had no plans of ever doing it. We had nothing ready, never looked into it. So I that I wish I I'll have to bring myself up more to speed on to myself. So. I can't really give out a lot of great advice on the hardware and the. I love trying out live stream Google uh, Hangouts with my testing channel. The only thing I don't understand is the screen share. That is very confusing. Okay, the screen can you share. Share a screen share. Yeah, <laughs> I would do that, but it's gonna like ding inside of itself. But you're just yeah. gonna picture that you have your screen share. So the best way to do it is take up like well, say you want to share. Uh, a web page well you have your google chrome and then you have your windows hangouts put them side by side on your desktop then click on share screen and then always the, the easier one to do is to share is the application window i want to try entire screen but i always have trouble with it let's just see what happens yeah see this starts to go so i can't even show where i'm grabbing there, okay, well, you can see there, okay. So, we'll try this and see if it works. So there's your screen share where I went. You're gonna click it. Oh, and it turns it off, that's right. So yeah, that's not gonna work at all. You can't show yeah, the share on I the share screen. I was trying to see if there was a way around. I'm pretty sure there's a video on YouTube. Yeah. If you go and check uh, in YouTube how to use a screen share on Hangouts, there's gonna be somebody who recorded it. Um, not your journey, oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, we'll do a dry run with you, okay? So don't worry about that. 
the natural journeys and watch some of your vids last night very cool thank you i'm hoping thank that you. god at some point i can get some more new ones up jungfrau I'm, still waiting uh, jungfrau yeah jungfrau is going to come hopefully so that's been sitting there like all like 99 ready to go for well since we started the live streams or just after and uh yeah even that one is still not done it's hard. I know live streams don't seem like much. It's just sitting down talking, but there's so much in getting guests and doing up the promos and stuff. It literally is a way bigger job than we ever guessed it was going to be, mixed in with our regular work, mixed in with the kids. it's uh, Time has become a very precious commodity lately, it feels like. So do you have anywhere you upload your train photos uh, stuff? I just would love to see. I have some train photos too, but mostly because I just was sitting beside Andrew when he was taking mm -hmm. his videos. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's a good. Uh, she's a good, oh my god, killing artist here. <laughs> hi, hi. <coughs> uh, probably uh, just off work, I assume. Yes, that's true. Huh? Yeah, uh, we're uh, hitting different uh, people here. Yeah. Okay. Um uh, well cool. yeah. <laughs> um well guys, um yeah. do you have any more questions? <laughs> Tomorrow we're gonna um uh, I will tell you about our next week. Somebody had taken away my calendar. Well, okay. <laughs> anyway, without the calendar, I can tell you that tomorrow we're gonna have a very interesting conversation. As always, I'm not gonna tell who. Yeah. Uh, um, so you got to check out Twitter in the afternoon or check in at 8 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. That's going to be amazing. Uh, um, a little bit bicycly, carishy, technically. Oh, God, I don't even know who it is now. <laughs> tomorrow. And then Friday, Friday, we are going to have uh, a very techy oriented uh, uh, guest. Uh, so, uh, although we have our, our Tuesday Tech Talk usually on Tuesdays, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions uh, you are going to have on Friday because our guest uh, knows a lot about that. Uh, so, that's going to be quite exciting. Uh, if you have any questions and you haven't managed to ask them on Tuesday during our live streams, uh, then come on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and ask your questions to us and our guest. You say your webcam is fuzzy. Hey, if we can make you out and everybody can tell you're there, it's all good. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. worry about that. No. Don't don't get all stressed. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna talk you through it. It's all good. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be cool to go pro live stream. I could sit on my porch of New Orleans and share the beauty. Oh, no, yes. I'm saying, my God, I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> you're halfway to your goal of 1.2k killing art excellent uh, yes you're going to be shaving your yes. head when you hit the goal that's yep. right so please come you know and go support killing art um definitely uh your fellow artist was mm -hmm. here you are, are you have a little bit different uh Style, styles, but the but, same. Uh, the same category, so to yep. say. Uh, we had Otter Studios today on as the guest. So, Killing Guard, uh, you haven't seen it after we upload, go back and watch it. it was some mm -hmm. awesome uh, stuff which we we're talking about drawings and take care of like this. That. Take care of this neat, not. Oh my God! Now we're getting. Now we're getting tired. You can tell we're all stumbling on our words. And <laughs> this natural journey. You take care of yourself. And uh, if you want to be. Uh, uh, guest, uh, DM us if you know of yeah. somebody that you think is going to be a great guest on our live stream. DM us that on Twitter as or well. Yeah. At yep. Pusha Studios, just hit me up with a message and we'll figure it out. And don't worry about anything, we'll walk you through it. Um, come back and yeah. give a like to the live stream if you haven't yet and leave a comment that you have been here. Yeah. Um, we love you all. We do, guys. Sorry about that. I think we're starting to stumble on our words. It's time to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. AOK Foraging. You yes, have to I know. I feel so bad because I, I love you guys. And definitely, like we were talking, I want to get you on soon. Uh, so. Yeah. Do you love bikes, cars? <laughs> Come on tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern. You are going to be here. <laughs> love you. Love you guys. Keep creating. Keep creating. <laughs>